broadcast of this championship game is made possible by the Cherokee Nation, our people, our culture, our history, our future. To learn more, go to visitcherokeenation.com and say hello to the Cherokee Nation. You'll find us at the end of a lot of long country roads, covering over 60% of the great state of Arkansas to provide reliable power to over half a million homes, farms, and businesses. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, your local energy partners. John's Honda, your hometown dealer for sales and service of Honda motorcycles, ATVs, Honda generators, and Honda lawnmowers. Family owned and operated since 1967, John's Honda offers factory certified technicians and experienced sales staff. Farmers and Merchants Bank and the Bank of Fayetteville share the mission of Arkansas PBS to enrich and empower all Arkansans. Community, dignity, respect. That's what me banking is all about. More at mebanking.com. My American story started when I was 18 and joined the Marine Corps. When I moved from France to the United States to continue my education. My American story started when I was 10 months old. I was actually born in a refugee camp. We were welcomed to Des Moines by a church. We hope to give back in any way that we can. It's a beautiful day in Arkansas as it's the 5A state championship game between Pulaski Academy and Little Rock Christian Academy. And once again, it's championship time in Arkansas right here at War Memorial Stadium. Hello, everyone. I'm RJ Honk alongside Bobby Swafford for today's clash between the Bruins and the Warriors. And Bobby, we're going to have a really good one today. Two teams that are very familiar with one another as they battle in another state championship game. It's the third straight year we've seen the Bruins and the Warriors go out in the second time this season, the sixth time in three years, these two have squared off with one another. Conference foes in the regular season, championship foes here today. Let's think about this. We'll, we'll talk more about the offense later in the broadcast, but these two defenses, a lot of times when you talk about Little Rock Christian and Pulaski Academy, you're talking about offense, but both of these defenses are really, really good this year. You're talking about a P18 that scores 50 points a game, but you can't get a mercy rule unless you stop somebody. Yeah. Little Rock Christian scores 46 a game. They've got a lot of mercy rule victories because their defense as well. They they both know how to turn over the football. They both know how to be opportunistic, and you can't forget the special teams. You know, I'm talking, you're talking about those turnovers. I was looking at last night. Pulaski Academy has had 19 interceptions this year. Little Rock Christians had 13 interceptions. I mean, and both these teams like to throw it, but I think this year alone, Little Rock, uh, Little Rock Christians running the ball a little bit more. Yeah, you've got to find different ways to change who you are. Yeah. Every year in high school football, the roster changes. Pulaski Academy is who they are. They, they're going to throw the football. They're going to go hurry up. They're going to be unconventional, but Little Rock Christians a little more more conventional, but this year they figured out about halfway through the season, hey, our traditional offense is not working. They started pounding the football, and they've got two really good players to hand it to. You know, we talk so much about players and everything. Think about the job that well, we, we know what Kevin Kelly's done over his time at Pulaski Academy, but Eric Koyu coming in uh, and, and really from day one has done a great job of, of getting um, his team into a spot to be in a state championship game. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that they changed the offense this year. You see the numbers for the running backs there, Javion Dyer, Joe about midway through the season, LRCA said, you know what, we got to hand the football off to this guy. 176 carries, 12 touchdowns. You see it, 130 yards per game, but they're going against a pretty good running back themselves. Yeah, Joe Hyman uh, over at Pulaski Academy. This is a kid, over 2,000 yards rushing, and uh, a lot of people say, well, he's going to go play Division One football. He's just got to get seen, man. I think these numbers right now are, are, are speaking for themselves. Yeah, and what you don't see there is the fact that he's only 46 yards away from being a 1,000-yard receiver. Yeah. So Pulaski Academy is going to get the ball to number six as much as they can. And I don't know how many times it's happened. I'm sure it's happened once or twice. But you're talking about a 2,000-yard rusher, a 1,000-yard receiver. Not sure that's happened a whole lot of times in the state of Arkansas. I was texting both coaches earlier this year, and I said, hey, I need some rosters, and I need some depth charts. And uh, Kevin Kelly sends me one back, says, hey, if they're a junior or senior, they're going to play today. And so you don't <laughs> ever hear coaches say that. Usually they have uh, a, a rundown of who's going to be playing in the game. But he said, if you're a junior or senior, you're going to get to play in a state championship game. And if you think about that, you know, going back to talking about how uh, both these teams are familiar with this, this stadium, with this setup, 
I mean, if you are a junior or senior in either program, you can pretty much count on you're playing yeah. for a state championship every year. Yeah, almost every year. In, yeah. in Class 5A, it's been dominated by these two schools. And recently, Pulaski Academy, I believe it was 7 out of 8 they've won. And the one time they didn't was because Little Rock Christian beat them a couple years ago. These are the two blue bloods in 5A football. And not shockingly, we're about to see it again. Well, when we come back, we're going to be talking about not only the running backs in these offense, offenses, but as well the, the quarterbacks for both these two teams. They are both outstanding quarterbacks for both Pulaski Academy and Little Rock Christian is it's an absolutely beautiful day here at War Memorial Stadium for the 5A state championship game. We're going to have two games right here uh, throughout at War Memorial Stadium. We've got the 5A game early and then the 2A game later tonight. So it ought to be a great time here at War Memorial Stadium. So when we come back, we will have first half action live from War Memorials. It's a 5A state championship game pre presented by Centennial Bank right here on Arkansas PBS. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car, to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service. Real people. way out to the field here at War Memorial Stadium for today's 5A state championship game between Pulaski Academy and Little Rock Christian Academy. RJ Hawk, Bobby Swafford here for today's matchup. Let's go down to the field and check in with the third member of our broadcast team, Hayden Balgaving. RJ, good afternoon. As you mentioned, a beautiful day here at War Memorial Stadium, and we talked about how good these offenses are. Well, I got to speak with both head coaches this week. Eric Coe, you said, look out for Corey Platt Jr. He has been the man that has carried him here to the 5A state finals. He's going to play quarterback. He's going to play running back. He's going to play wide receiver. He's going to play some defense. And Bobby, as you mentioned, Joe Hyman trickling in on being a 1,000-yard receiver, already a 2,000-yard rusher. Kevin Kelly told me this week I would not trade this guy for anyone in the world. They're going to put up some big numbers today, I'm sure. And Hayden, while we got you on, the, on camera right now, I want to say, you know, we're in December, yeah. and, and it's an absolutely gorgeous day down it's there. It's beautiful. The today. It is absolutely beautiful. I was a little worried about all that rain that pushed through last night. Luckily, this game on a Saturday, not on a Friday. Guys, it's a little chilly, but it's perfect football weather. Late December, sunny skies, really good weather if you want to throw the football a little bit today, and that's exactly what both of these teams love to do. Thank you, Hayden. We'll check in with you throughout the the game today. As I said, both captains have made their way to midfield. Real quick, uh, Bobby, let's talk about some of these offensive players for both these teams. Uh, when you look at Pulaski Academy, we'll start there. And we just talked about Joe Hyman a little bit, but they're running a two quarterback system. Yeah. A lot of times when you say you've got two quarterbacks, you've got none. Yeah. That's not really the case with the Pulaski Academy. They've, they've made some changes. They've circled things around. But when you've got two who are throwing the football as much as they are and finding the end zone and, more importantly, finding Joe Hyman out of the backfield, they're getting things done. And Colin Cooper on the other side, the quarterback for Little Rock Christian, does a great job, but he has a great running back in JV and Dyer Jones. Yeah, it's, it's always nice when you can just turn around and hand the football to a playmaker. But you talk about Colin Cooper, 1,700 yards, 22 touchdowns, compared to just 10 interceptions. He's taking care of the football and that's been the biggest difference for Little Rock Christian the first half of the season they turned it over lost to Magnolia the first time they'd lost to anybody other than Pulaski Academy in a couple seasons they fixed things they found out hey let's go with the running game first worry about the passing game when we have to and that's worked for the Warriors that's gonna be a lot of fun both teams have come out Pulaski Academy wearing their navy blue uniforms with uh, powder blue helmets yeah. hadn't seen that look in, in quite some time and for Little Rock Christian they're gonna come out with their all white uniforms with Navy uh, helmets and the gold trim. So we're just about set and ready to go. Today's officials for today's ball game. You've got your referee, Philip Cole. Center judge is Brent Keithley. Doug Coney is your umpire. Rocky Thompson is the linesman. Line judge, Ronnie Evans and Matt Thompson will be the back judge for today's Class 5A state championship game here at War Memorial Stadium. Pulaski Academy making their way onto the playing surface. They are the defending 5A state champion and they're going to clash it out with Little Rock Christian. Glad to have you along today, wherever you may be across the state of Arkansas, as, uh, boy, championship action this year, a little bit different than normal. Usually we have all the championships over the course of 
uh, two weekends, a Friday and Saturday. This year, it's over the course of three weekends, just on Saturday. A little bit different, but you got to change things up because of COVID. Yeah, you know, I don't want to relive this year ever again <laughs> in, in athletics. And what, the, what these kids and these programs and the coaches have been able to do to get to this point is absolutely amazing. I don't mind the three championship weekends, to be quite honest. A doubleheader on Saturday, three straight weekends in December has been absolutely perfect. The next weekend, we're going to be able to wrap it up with 4A and 3A. But I don't like how we got here, but I like the fact that we are here. Yeah, and uh, it's a lot of fun, and we're just about set and ready to go as Little Rock Christian. They're going to make their way onto the playing surface, and they are going to receive the football to start the ball game. At this Pulaski Academy won the toss, and they elected to defer to the second half. Kevin Kelly on the sideline. You know, one thing that he, Kevin has made kind of a, uh, I, I would say, a tradition he and his staff normally wear shorts on the sideline. He's sticking to that tradition. Uh, the rest of staff uh, wearing the, the pants throughout this ball game. So and They're sticking to the tradition of onside kicks. Onside You're not going to see PA kick it deep very often. That's why you see all 11 players for Little Rock Christian within 10 yards of the football. On Selick is the junior kicker for Pulaski Academy, and the ball's on the turf. Here comes the onside kick. It's on the turf, and it looks like Pulaski Academy's got it at the 46-yard line, and that's just the way that you've got to practice that you don't see it very often, but uh, you never know which way the ball's going to turn. It looks like it was Christian Rose who was able to come up with the onside kick for Pulaski Academy. The first big break, and before a second even ticks off the clock, that's why Pulaski Academy's kickoff unit is so difficult. They have 10 or 15 different onside kicks that they're going to try, and their offensive formations are just as unique as they line up with four wide receivers and a bunch to the top of their screen. Well, they're going to start off with Charlie Pfizer at the quarterback's position. Oh, excuse me, that's going to be Nolan Bruffett. Bruffett is going to be the quarterback for Pulaski Academy as they've got a bunch set to that top side. Bruffett, three-step drop, goes across the middle, has a man, and it's down to Jalen Witcher. Witcher, That's who, uh, yeah, he lost it down, and it looks like Little Rock Christian's going to come up with it. It was Corey, or excuse me, Landon Nelson who came up with it. He's the defensive back. It was a nice pitch and catch, but he just didn't hold on to it. Corey Platt, the defensive back there for Little Rock Christian, got beat off the line of scrimmage, but able to close and able to get the football out before the receiver hits the ground. A big, big momentum swing to start things off, and you can see him rip out the football. Outstanding play by Corey Platt, who gets it done on both sides. You know, one thing you had mentioned when we were talking in the break, Pulaski Academy is a team that turns the ball over a lot on offense. Yeah, they've, they, most of the time it's because of interceptions they've thrown this year. Uh, well over a handful, 24 interceptions between the two quarterbacks. But that time it was not being able to hold on to the football. So all that momentum you get by recovering the onside kick is lost right there as you give up the football in the first play. So Little Rock Christian has the football for their first drive, and they're going to be set up. Looks like they're going to go ahead and uh, review it because all, all turnovers and all scoring plays can be reviewed. There's no judgment on the field, so it's going to go up to the booth is how these reviews work. And what, watching the first replay, let me see if we can get another look at it. It looked like the ball was coming out before the receiver's knee hit the ground. Yeah, and we'll, uh, we'll try to get our, our guys to give us a replay. Here it comes. And so, I mean, and really the ball was just floated across the middle and nice catch, but you look there, and now the, to me it looks, Bobby, like the ball got, got taken out before his knee hit. Yep. We'll have to slow that down just a little bit, but uh, to me it looks like it was a clean clean strip. Yeah, what they're going to have to look at, too, there's a couple different things. They have to, one, make sure the receiver has possession to make a football move, and he took a couple steps, but did he have complete possession of it? And then, two, were there any extremities that were on the ground, whether it be a knee or an elbow for the receiver before Platt was able to rip it out? And, you know, one thing a lot of people ask about is, is how well is the replay system here at War Memorial Stadium for a high school game. Well, the folks at DV Sports who do uh, college games, they're the ones actually running the replay. So there's multiple camera views for these state championship games that they're able to look at. Uh, we'll take a look. Here's the end zone camera right here. That's a clean catch. Oh, the knee is down. Oh, Looks is like down. his right knee is going to be down there before the football comes out. So would not be surprised to see this one overturn and PA get the football back. Here's, here's Philip Cole with the call. The ruling on the field will stand. Wow. So I, I know they want to get these decisions made quickly. So maybe they said there's not enough evidence there. Maybe a little too close to being a bang-bang play. And they're going to stay with the call on the field. So Little Rock Christian's going to have the football first and 10 as the ball's going to be on the 14-yard line. Here's a handoff to Dyer Jones, and he's bottled up in the backfield. A host of Pulaski Academy players there to get him for a 
two yard loss leading the charge that time was Isarius Woods. And so that'll bring up second down and 12 for Little Rock Christian Academy. Yeah, Woods is going to be a player along with Fudu Shinkawa that you've got to keep an eye on. 79 tackles on the season for Woods, an amazing 117 for Shinkawa. Colin Cooper's the quarterback. He puts Dyer Jones to his left. As they've got three wideouts on that left side looking to throw. Under pressure. Rolls right and just throws it away. Had a man it looked like in the area was Dyer Jones. And so that'll bring up third down. And, you know, we talked so much about the PA defense early on. And one thing that you, you've seen early on this drive is that they're putting a lot of pressure on the quarterback position. Yeah, they're going to get some pressure from all angles. As unconventional as their offense is, they like to bring pressure as far as a blitz from different angles on the defense. So you can't really point to one guy, even though Shinkawa is a big-time playmaker, along with uh, Josiah Johnson, the safety, who's got 162 stops this season. Third and 12, they go with a handoff straight up the middle to Dyer Jones. And he's able to carry a couple Bruins out to the 20 yard line and that'll bring up fourth down for Little Rock Christian Academy and you know you, you have the turnover by Pulaski Academy and now you force a three and out and uh, the punting unit the punting unit is going to come on for uh, Little Rock Christian Academy let's head down to Hayden Baumgabe on the sidelines Obviously, Pulaski Academy gets that onside kick, turned the ball over. The first person to go talk to Jalen Witcher after that fumble, wide receivers coach Anthony Lucas. He said, guys, it's going to be a long game. You cannot worry about a turnover this early. A lot of football left to play, but you see the leadership. It's got to be nice to have a guy like Anthony Lucas on your sideline if you're Pulaski Academy. It's an interesting punt there by uh, Little Rock Christian. Normally, you can't go downfield as a lineman until the ball is kicked. Well, that time he holds the football back for a a few seconds, Eliza's coverage seemed to get down there and well, no laundry. Isaiah Hankins on the kick, 48 yard punt for Little Rock Christian Academy as it takes it down to the 33 yard line and that's where Pulaski Academy will start their second drive of the ball game and Nolan Bruffett is gonna be the quarterback in with a bunch set. And he's swinging out right side, and has some running room as that's Joe Hyman who gets in the action early on here in this ball game and is able to get a yard shy of the first down to bring up second and one. That's a great block at the point of contact by the PA receiver that stands up the Warrior defender, allows Hyman a little space, quick pickup of nine. Lasky Academy gonna spread it out as they've got receivers and offensive linemen spread out throughout the field. As that was Pfizer at the quarterback position, they go with a double reverse triple backward pass and now they're able to pick up about four yards on the play after the pass. <laughs> That's a lot going on for four or five yards but it works. Uh, no zero pass rush there for Little Rock Christian because you have no idea where the football is going. Picks up the first down. It was Gabe King who made the tackle for Little Rock Christian Academy but it is a first down as the ball's out at the 48 yard line. More traditional set now for Pulaski Academy as Bruffett is in the quarterback position. He's under pressure and taken down in the backfield. Coming up with the sack was Anthony Pugh for Little Rock Christian Academy, and it's going to be about a four-yard loss to bring up second down. He's been their big play guy at the defensive line. 14 tackles for a loss this season. That sack number six just comes around the end, takes Bruffett to the ground. Lasky Academy working quickly as they're going to send four wide to each side. As we don't have a score with 9.30 to play here in the first quarter. Pfizer's in at quarterback. They're going to hand it off to Joe Hyman. Hyman works around that right side. Boy, I tell you how quick Joe Hyman is, Bobby. Is he was able to go wide outside and was able to pick up a nice gain, about five yards on the play, and that'll bring up third down. Not great size, just 5'9", 175 pounds is Hyman. Does a nice job of breaking through that first arm tackle, picks up a few yards, and gets to a third manageable. So it's third down, and it was Gabe King who made the tackle that time. As Bruffett's back in at quarterback. Bruffett across the middle, and it's nicely deflected away. And that time, Anthony Pugh was able to run step for step with the receiver and knock down the pass and bring up fourth down for Pulaski Academy. But as most people that know about Pulaski Academy, they're not a punting team. That's right. It's a great play by Pugh. You see him get a sack earlier in the drive. That time he goes back man to man and goes step for step for the receiver. But now it's a big fourth down for both sides. We're going to send four wide receivers to the near side, Bobby, and once right at the sideline. Here's a pass by Bruffett, and it's going to be right there at the marker, and I think he did get the first down. It's about a yard pass, 
it was Corey Platt who came up to make the cat or make the tackle and that'll be a first down for Pulaski Academy. Yeah, simple uh, route there. Jalen Witcher just goes to the flat. His quarterback hits him as soon as he turns around, about a yard beyond the marker. And PA's back into Little Rock Christian territory. Well, Pfizer now in at quarterback. Or excuse me, Bruff it is. Goes across the middle and it's overthrown. And some Pulaski Academy fans are wanting a a penalty flag, but it was just overthrown that time to bring up second down. Yeah, PA showing they're not afraid to attack number four for the PA or to the little Christian defense, Corey Platt. He's one of their best defenders back there. You're talking about a, a defensive back with four or five interceptions on the season, but they're attacking him early in this contest. Ruffett still in at quarterback for Pulaski Academy. I hand it off to Hyman. Penalty flags down, and he'll. Run out of bounds after a two-yard game. Had two penalty flags come in, one from the the referee and then one from the side judge. We'll get what the call is as our umpire Philip Cole sorts everything out. Looks like it's going to be holding against Pulaski Academy, and that'll back them up. Well, penalties aren't going to be a big issue for either one of these teams as, as explosive as the two offenses are. You know, second and 20 is really not that big of a deal, especially when you have four downs to get it. So it's second down and 21, ball at the 49-yard line. Here's Bruffett with a pass, and the flat's out to Hyman, and he'll walk out of bounds at the 45-yard line. It was Titus Colquitt who came up to knock him out of bounds, and it'll bring up third down and long for Pulaski Academy, only about a six-yard pickup, and so it's third and 15. We got a Little Rock Christian player down on the near sideline, but you've already seen in the first four minutes of this contest the different ways that Pulaski Academy is trying to get the football to Joe Hyman, whether it's handed off to him, swinging it to him out of the backfield, or lining him up at, re at receiver in a bunch formation and, and get some blockers out in front. So they're trying to get him the ball as many times as they possibly can. You, you look at the touches for Joe Hyman this year, 180 rushing attempts, 76 receptions. So they're going to try to find a way to get him the football. Looks like the downed warrior is Titus Colquitt, who made the tackle for Little Rock Christian on that last play, and he's down on the Pulaski Academy sideline. Let's go down to Hayden Balgavy and see if he saw anything down there. Hayden, uh, I know that you're on the Pulaski Academy sideline. Did you see uh, what happened on the play? It was uh, it was out of my vantage point at that point, RJ, but you can see all the Pulaski Academy members right here, everyone taking a knee. Uh, as we mentioned, both these head coaches talked about it this week. A lot of these guys know each other. They don't go to the same high school, but they go to the same churches. They have so many community events because these teams are so close to one another in proximity, but a lot of these guys, friends off the field, so nobody wants to see any injuries today. Uh, a lot of respect on each sideline, but hopefully uh, he can get up here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Hayden. You know, to Hayden's point, Bobby, uh, I was – I was looking at the numbers, and if you look at Little Rock Christians, Walker White, the wide receiver, his brother actually plays for Pulaski Academy. He's Cooper White, the wide receiver. So uh, you got brothers in the same household that go to, to two different schools. Yeah, it's an interesting aspect of it. You think about it, you got two Little Rock schools. As Hayden mentioned, they're not too far geographically from one another. So there's going to be a lot of crossover, whether it be Little League football, going to church, playing in the Boys and Girls Club, whatever the case may be. There's going to be a lot of overlap when you get two schools from the same city playing one another. And don't forget, you can join the football conversation on social media. Just use the hashtag ARPBS Sports as it's good to see big number 33, uh, Titus Colquitt, get up and be able to jog off the field. So it's going to be it's going to be third down and 15. The ball at the 45 yard line. Pulaski Academy. And I have two opportunities to try to pick up the first down. 817 to play first quarter as Pulaski Academy will send three wide to that far side of the field. Here's Bruffett. Looking to throw under pressure, and he just throws it out of bounds, and we've got a penalty flag down. His intended target that time was Jalen Witcher, and Gabe King was didn't really give him much room to try to catch the pass as the, the penalty flag is down at the 35-yard line. There's a lot of contact at the top of the route there, and we'll have to see if they get the Warriors for a defensive pass interference, which would be big because it's an automatic first down. 
Philip Cole is the referee. He'll give us a call. Holding on the defense. Ten yard penalty. That goes back to what you were talking about. A lot of contact on the top of the route, and Cole must have just got in a little too tight because that's where they threw the penalty flag. Yep. So it's going to be a ten-yard penalty there. So instead of, you know, I guess fourth and, or excuse me, fourth and fifteen, it's going to be third and five, which is a big penalty, obviously going the way of the Bruins. So Pulaski Academy has the ball moved up to the thirty-five yard line. It's third down and five. Rough it. In the shotgun has stacked wide receivers on that far side. He comes near side, has a man. It's caught and taken all the way down to the seven yard line. And it was Joe Hyman who came up with the reception. It was a 28 yard pitch and catch and Pulaski Academy's in the red zone. Yeah, Hyman lines up in the slot just to the left of the line of scrimmage, able to sneak out unaccounted for by the Warrior defense and it's first and goal. Ruffett in the shotgun with Hyman to his right. And I hand it off inside. And there's nowhere to go. That time it was Dylan Allison who took the handoff and actually lost about a yard on the play to bring up second down. Nice job by the Christian defense to stay at home on the misdirection. We saw that play a lot last week with the double handoff from Lake Hamilton in the wing tee. Kind of essentially the same type of play there. Uh, Pulaski Academy tried to pull off, but the Warriors did a nice job staying home. Luke Lee came in for Little Rock Christian to make the tackle. And it's now second and goal. Here's Bruffett looking to throw across the middle. End zone. Touchdown. Pulaski Academy. It was Cooper White on the reception for the touchdown. The quick slant there. And 62 catches for 18 touchdowns entering to today. And you can see why Cooper White's a big time target for his quarterback in PA strikes first. We talked about RJ, all the, the numbers of Joe Hyman, but their receivers have big time numbers as well. Jalen Witcher has 19 touchdowns. Cooper White with his 19th touchdown catch there as PA lines up and goes for two. Here's Bruffett in the shotgun working for the two point conversion. Throws across the middle, bobbled around, juggled. It's caught by Allison. Seven twenty two. To play first quarter, Pulaski Academy. They lead it eight to nothing over Little Rock Christian Academy. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Football Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. During this extraordinary time, our commitment to you and your family has never been stronger. Providing programs and services to help your children continue to learn at home. Delivering in-depth and timely reporting that keeps you connected. Bringing you the kind of inspiration, wonder, and delight that you've come to expect from public television. Over the years, the support you've provided for this station has never been more important. Helping us find comfort amid the chaos. And shining a light on the beauty of the American spirit. That's why PBS was created, exactly for times like this. And it's all thanks to your support. We are going to get through this. And we're going to do it together. As you have been there for us, we are here for you. For you. For you. For you. For you. Pulaski Academy strikes first with 722 to play in the first quarter as they lead it eight to nothing over Little Rock Christian Academy and they're on for the onside kick once again. Be the second onside kick of the ball game and here it comes as it's in and out of the hands of a Little Rock Christian Warrior and let's see who jumps on it. They're saying Pulaski Academy. There was a scrum at the bottom of the pile. I, I couldn't quite see who came up with it, Bobby, but Pulaski Academy and the referees are all saying that PA's got it. Yeah, just the same onside kick they tried to start the football game. The kicker lines the football up, laying on the ground sideways, and the spin of it is just almost impossible to gauge. The Little Rock Christian receiver can't get two hands on it, and you see number 32 for Pulaski Academy jump on it first, and that's Fudushinkawa, the outstanding linebacker. Yeah, he, he was able to get to the bottom of that pile. You know, 
there's so much talk about how good he is as a linebacker. He's not a very big guy, only no. 155 pounds, and he was able to wiggle his way in and pick out the onside kick. There's something to be said about being able to find the football. Yeah. Same thing on special teams. He did a great job of finding the football and taking advantage and giving the PA offense another chance. So PA's got it with 722 to play first quarter. Now here's Hyman taking a direct snap and he had nowhere to go as he got back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be a bring up second down. Anthony Pugh for Little Rock Christian came in to make the tackle. Yeah, Pugh's already had his name called a bunch for this Little Rock Christian defense. He's a guy that makes plays at every level. Five sacks, uh, four fumble recoveries, 14 tackles for a loss. Doing a nice job here in this first quarter. Check in with Hayden Bow gave him momentarily as here's Pfizer rolling to his right. He's got his man Allison as he goes out of bounds near the first down marker. It's going to be Really close, maybe about a yard shy of the first down. Let's head down to Hayden Balgavy. RJ, you mentioned that family legacy at Pulaski Academy. Cooper White on that touchdown for the Bruins to put him up eight to nothing. Of course, JD White, he's got a big ball game going on right now in Fayetteville as the Razorbacks are taking on the Alabama Crimson Tide. I think this ball game going a little bit better for the White family than the ball game up in Fayetteville. But we're not going to talk about that. We'll stick with the Bruins and the uh, Warriors down here. Here's Joe Hyman. Pitch and catch wide open. He's going to walk into the end zone. 42 yards for the touchdown. They just snuck him out of the backfield. The quarterback rolls to the left. Hyman sneaks out to the right. Not accounted for by the Little Rock Christian defense. And Hyman is back in the end zone, a place he is well familiar with. 22 rushing touchdowns and now 10 touchdowns receiving. And that also puts him over 1,000 yards receiving on the season. So he's got himself a 2,000-yard rushing and a 1,000-yard receiving season. Bobby, the way they did that offense where everything flowed right and Hyman just kind of snuck out yeah. there and was all by himself to just walk into the end zone. Probably the easiest touchdown he's had in a while. He scores a lot of easy ones, though. Here's Pfizer as they spread things out. They're just going to hand it off. That's going to go to Joe Hyman, and he'll go in for the second two-point conversion of the ball game. And it's now 16 to nothing. Pulaski Academy, they lead Little Rock Christian Academy here in the 5A state championship game. Yeah, that's one thing you've got to be able to do if you're a Little Rock Christian. You've got to weather the storm. You know Pulaski Academy is going to create big plays with their offense. because They're going to create it with the special teams. The one thing you can't do is let it snowball and really start to avalanche on you. And we've already seen this here right now with 16 points of recovered onside kick. You know, strike after strike after strike. Now, if you're a Little Rock Christian, you need a time-consuming drive. Give your defense a chance to rest, catch their breath on the sideline. But more importantly, you've got to make this a contest because you can't let it get out of hand. It's really interesting, RJ. We talk about, you know, these two teams have split the last two state championship yeah. games. In the last eight games against Pulaski Academy, Little Rock Christian's defense has given up an average of 61 points. Ooh. And so... They won a game they won. Obviously, yeah. they scored a bunch of points, but they've got to find a way to score some points because we know PA is going to do the same. Here's Selick with the onside kick, and it's recovered by Little Rock Christian that time. Ben Ridings was able to recover for Little Rock Christian Academy as they'll have it in Pulaski Academy territory as it'll be spotted at the 49-yard line in PA territory with 6.42 to play in the first quarter. Got to be able to take advantage of the great field position. Your special teams get the football back. Ridings did a nice job of just jumping on the football. And now if you're Little Rock Christian's offense, grind it out. Hand it to your two, mate, two, two playmakers, Dyer Jones. Get the ball to Corey Platt. Find a way to matriculate it into the end zone. Colin Cooper, the quarterback, has Dyer Jones to his left. Going to hand it off to him. He'll work out to the outside and... It'll pick up a nice gain that time as it's a six-yard gain out to the 44-yard line. And it was Zach Horsey, the Pulaski Academy defender, who was able to take him down, and it brings up second down. You've got a workhorse, a 1,300-yard running back in number two, and J.V. on Dyer Jones is handing the football to let those guys up front do the work. Cooper in the shotgun. I hand it off again, but Dyer Jones has met in the backfield. It was, I believe, Dylan Allison who led the way for Pulaski Academy. Shinkawa in there as well. Yeah, Shinkawa was able to come in and help clean things up. And it's a loss of two on the play, and that brings up third down and eight. For, Pal for Little Rock Christian Academy. Yeah, just untouched right up the middle was the first defender for PA, and that's the one thing you can't have as an offensive lineman or free runners, and that one blows it up in the backfield. Third and eight, ball at the 47. Cooper 
And I hand it off to Dyer. Straight up the middle, has running room and a first down and more. It's a great play call there on, on third and long. Sorry to cut you off there, RJ, but Dyer Jones gets a crease and he does the rest. Yeah, Dyer Jones was able to go up the middle until Andrew Pfizer was able to come in and take him down. And so now it's first and 10 for Little Rock Christian Academy. Colin Cooper takes the handoff, passes left side, and is able to pick up good yardage as they would get a six-yard gain. Shinkawa was there to make the tackle. And it was, I believe that was Platt that was able to get out there and get that reception. And so that brings up second down and four for Little Rock Christian Academy. I like what Little Rock Christian did there. They've got the running game established. Go to the outside, move the defense around. Don't let them pin the, pin the ears back against the run game. Iron Jones set up to the right of Colin Cooper. Hands it off to him. Left side has running lanes, and he's going to walk into the end zone. It's a 27-yard touchdown for Little Rock Christian Academy and Javian Dyer Jones. It's a great drive by the offensive line on the left side. There creates a huge hole for Javion Dyer D Jones, and he puts it in the end zone for the 13th time this season. But that's a huge answer drive. RJ is now Little Rock Christian gets a little bit of that momentum back that PA has stolen early in this contest. And you know, we've seen Pulaski Academy go for two on both their scoring opportunities. Now Little Rock Christian Academy is doing the same thing. Cooper going to throw. Has a man. We've got a penalty flag down, though, as it's incomplete. Tried to hook up that time with his wide receiver. That was Eli Cooper. Throw a little behind his receiver. Prevented that one from being completed, but we'll have to see what the laundry is about. Philip Cole is our referee. We'll get the call. And that was one man downfield on the offense. So one of the receivers likely covered up. Uh, you can't have two receivers on a line of scrimmage. So if one of them goes out for a pass, he's covered up by another receiver. That's why you see the flag come out more times than not. It's on an offensive lineman as quick hitting as that play was likely a, a, a bad formation or a still if you're Little Rock Christian though, I mean that drive was even though you didn't get the two point conversion. That drive was crucial just because of the fact that they were able to get in the end zone. They, you know, Pulaski Academy on two straight drives was able to come down and, and score. It was good for Little Rock Christian to finally find, find pay dirt. You know, I said they've got to give a chance to get their defense a rest. They didn't do that there, but at least they got the ball in the end zone. Get a little confidence for your offense, and now we've got a contest. Don't forget, you can stay in the know about Arkansas PBS programs and announcements. Just text ARPBS to 313131 for direct updates to your phone. So on to kick for Little Rock Christian is Benjamin Kelly. Say that it it was supposed to be Kelly, but it's actually Isaiah Hankins who's on to kick. As it's a short kick that's going to go out of bounds at the 21 yard line. And a penalty flag will come out and Pulaski Academy is going to get great field position on their third drive. Yeah, you try to do everything you can as a special teams unit to get the ball away from number six for P.A. Joe Hyman. And that one, a little spiral that goes out of bounds. And as you mentioned, R.J., great field positions coming up for the Bruins. Hey, let's check in with Hayden Balgavy on the sideline real quick before this Pulaski Academy drive. RJ, you mentioned right there how big that drive was for the Warriors. You give up two onside kicks in the first quarter. You're only down 10 points in this ball game. You're a two-point conversion away from making it a one-score game. So big momentum drive. Coach Koyu said this week we have to play perfect if we want to win this ball game. Thank you, Hayden. As Nolan Bruff, it's going to be in the shotgun with his running back, Joe Hyman, to his left. Have four wide receivers in the formation. Under pressure, just lobs it to the right side, and they're going to throw a penalty flag. As I think, Bobby, that was probably on the outstretched arms of Cooper White just a little too much, but there was contact as the ball was flying, so you got to throw the penalty flag there. Yeah, it looked like the defensive back for Christian got there a little too early and initiated contact, and that's going to result in a big first down for the PA offense. It was interference on the defense. It's 15-yard penalty. Result will be first down. It was Luke Lee who the penalty was called on. A lot of times you think about Pulaski Academy, they they score because of the trick plays, the onside kicks. A lot of times it's man to man. I mean, yeah. that was a simple go route right down in the middle of the field, resulted in a pass interference call, gives them a first down at midfield. So Bruffett in the shotgun. Going to hand it off to Joe Hyman, straight up the middle. He's able to pick up about two yards on the play. I think they may give him three to. Off forward motion, so that'll bring up second down and seven. 
Nice job by the interior front for the Warriors to, to shut it down. It's so easy to worry about the outside when you've got so many receivers stacked up. But when you've got a running back like Joe Hyman, you've got to stay in your lanes and, and try to shut down the running game as much as you can. Here's the pump fake by Bruffett. He goes right side, and it's in and out of the hands of his of the cornerback uh, Landon Nelson. I mean, it was almost as if he was Landon knew exactly the route, and he threw it right to him. Yeah, Little Rock Christian is doing a great job of getting their hands on the PA receivers. They're trying to initiate contact, trying to break up the timing pattern. They do so there, and Nelson misses a what would have been a surefire interception, what could have been a big play for their defense, but does force a third and long. Third down and seven, ball at the 47-yard line. 4.03 to play here in a first quarter of the 5A state championship game. Pass comes near side. That's into Jalen Witcher's hands, and Witcher gets knocked out of bounds a yard past the sticks. It was by Preston Davis. A great job by Witcher. Makes the catch short of the line to gain, but makes the first defender miss, get the first down yardage, and he's their leading receiver this year, 75 catches, and you can see him do the work after the, after the catch to get the first down. First and 10, ball at the 39-yard line. Three wide outs going to go to the Little Rock Christian side of the field. Here's Bruffett looking to throw. Goes deep down left side, and Overthrows his intended target. That was Jalen Witcher. And another flag. We'll have to see if the receiver stepped out of bounds. Normally it's a hat, not a flag that comes out in that instance. We'll see if there's too much contact by Platt there on the go route. The penalty flag is at the 28-yard line on the Pulaski Academy sideline. Here's the call. Holding on the defense. 10-yard penalty. He, I mean, you can't blame Little Rock Christian for, for trying to play a little physical, especially on the outside. Is you know they're going to go with a lot of go routes, a lot of uh, deep crossing routes, but you just got to keep your hands off of them. Yeah, I mean, that, that looked like good coverage to me, but they say Platt got a little too handsy, and now PA's on the move again. Now here's Joe Hyman, who has a pass to him. It's a pickup of two yards, and that'll bring up second down. Luke Lee pushed him out of bounds. No, I agree with you 100%. I like the, the physical nature that Little Rock Christian's using in the secondary. Platt's been flagged for two holding calls, but honestly, I mean, that second one, you, you'd like to let him let it go. The ball was well overthrown. Obviously, the, fact, the flag was thrown before the football hit the ground, but it's, I thought that was a good play by the secondary. Then again, you know, I don't like officials. <laughs> and they, they're going to officially give him a one-yard gain. It's second down and nine. Here's a handoff to Hyman. Straight up the middle, and he's met immediately right at the line of scrimmage. It was Holt Chapel, the linebacker for Little Rock Christian, who met him at the line of scrimmage and said, no, sir. I'll bring up third down and nine. It's a big stop by the defensive front. Get Pulaski Academy behind the chains. Uh, the first man to make the contact there was Gabe King, the big defensive lineman, and the rest of the Warriors defense able to finish it off. So it's third down and nine as Bruffett's going to be all by himself in the backfield. It's man to man across the board, single high safety. Bruffett looking to throw. Pass goes left side. The corner fell down. It's into the hands of Cooper White, and he takes it all the way down to the four-yard line as Keegan McCarver brought him down for Little Rock Christian. Yeah, nice job. This is a nice combination around against the man-to-man. -man. You have the one safety, so you run a corner around away from that safety, a perfectly thrown pass by the quarterback, and the Bruins again have it first and goal inside the five. It was a 24-yard pickup for Pulaski Academy as they're inside the five-yard line. Here's Bruffett, hands it off to Hyman. Hyman works his way in the end zone, spin move, and he gets in. It's a four-yard touchdown run for Joe Hyman, and Pulaski Academy extends their lead. A nice job by the offensive front. They've done a great job so far to keep their quarterback clean in the pocket. That time they lower the shoulder, and Hyman able to muscle his way in from four yards out for his 23rd rushing touchdown of the season. It's a PAT. Who knew? Yeah, I didn't think this was, this was going to happen in the Pulaski Academy. I didn't, I didn't even think PAT was in the playbook. Selick has kicked 36 of them, so yeah. I guess they, they, they call the dogs off every now and then. And it looks like Pulaski Academy the Academy may have jumped. By the way, I'm, I'm looking at Dead ball. 
Ball start. It's a long quarter. The I know what you're about to say. It's a long quarter. Oh, it's been a really long quarter. But no, I, I happened to look down at my phone as we were doing the game, and I've got about 10 referees and officials in the state of Arkansas <laughs> that say, we don't like your partner either. That's fine. <laughs> that's, that's fine. The thing about it is, I'm a former offensive lineman. Yes. I never held in my entire life, and yet never. they still threw flags at me. Yes. Oh. I'm okay with that. Bobby's only kidding. He loves everyone. Except for referees. Snaps back, kick is up, and it is good. So it's 23 to 6, Pulaski Academy on top of Little Rock Christian Academy here in the 5A state championship game. Let's head down to the sideline and check in with Hayden Balgavy. Hayden, how's, the, how's that, everything on that Pulaski Academy sideline right now? I would imagine nice. Well, I'm actually standing next to Anthony Lucas right now, and he is fired up for his guys. You know, what's funny enough is Nolan Bruffett has had a great start to this ball game. I was actually standing just beside his dad. His dad is a surgeon here in Little Rock, and he said, I, you know, surgery's easy. I'd be so nervous right now. I said, well, sir, your son looks like he's having a pretty solid Saturday to start today. But as you mentioned, Bruffett, really start, solid start for the Bruins. And Pulaski Academy doing what they do, recovering onside kicks, scoring at will. Joe Hyman looks great so far, as you mentioned, Bobby, in the beginning of the broadcast. And PA, they're doing what they do. Thank you, Hayden. 2.48 to play here in the first quarter of a very slow-moving first quarter in the 5A state championship game, and we've got another onside kick that is going to go out of bounds for Pulaski Academy. And so Little Rock Christian going to get great field position. That's the one thing about the onside kick. If you don't keep it in bounds and it goes out, you're going to have great field position for the opponent. That's why if you were to cover the onside kick, you've got a chance to get into the shootout with PA, but the Bruins and Coach Kelly feel like more times than not, they're going to get a chance to recover an onside kick or two, and all of a sudden those turnovers start to add up into extra possessions, and that's when the Bruins think they've got an advantage. Don't forget, you can watch all these contests starting next week. And if you missed the 7A and 6A state championship games, you can watch them online right now as Arkansas PBS offers all football games and more on demand at YouTube.com slash Arkansas PBS. First and 10 as they hand it off to Dyer Jones, and he has nowhere to go. In fact, he's going to lose a couple on the play to bring up second down. It was Luke Witham who came in to make the stop and force the second and long. Nice job by Witham just coming off the edge, getting an arm around the ankles of Dyer Jones and uh, allowing the rest of the Bruin defense to get there to finish off the tackle for loss. So it's second down and 12, ball to 48. Three wide to that far side as Colin Cooper's in the shotgun. Makes a handoff and it's in and out of the hands of his intended target. That time for Little Rock Christian, it was Isaiah Hankins he was trying to hook up with. And then a bring up third down. Cameron Mercer for Pulaski Academy was on coverage. A great job by Mercer. Read the pass, immediately broke on the route, able to get there just as the football arrives to the receiver and knocks it loose and forces a third long for the Warrior offense. Third down and 12. All three wide receivers for Christian on that left side of the formation. Three-step drop, looks to throw, back right side, right at the marker. That time he hooked up with his wide receiver, Walker White. And it's right there at the 40-yard line. Jalen McKinney knocked him out of bounds. And they're going to say it's a first down. It's a nice job to come across the progression. You see the quarterback looking left there. Cooper comes all the way back to the right, with which probably is his fourth option, hits the tight end at the first down marker. Cooper hands it off to Dyer Jones. Working his way right, then back left, and is able to pick up three yards on the play to bring up second down and seven. It was Dylan Allison who came in to make the stop for Pulaski Academy. A minute 50 to play here in the first quarter. This game started at what time? <laughs> yes, it did start at 12-10. Uh, 12-10, yeah, 30-minute first quarter. It's going to be a long day. Not, maybe not as long as the Arkansas defense is having, but still long. Cooper's in the shotgun, has a wing back to the right. Here's Dyer Jones, works it right side, has running lanes. He's dragging players down to the 14-yard line. How about Dyer Jones? He had the sled on the backside, and he just kept hauling. That's a workload right there for Dyer Jones. 
Nice job of the PA defender. Just grab whatever you can to try to slow him down. But he was a Earl Campbell rip away jersey away from scoring there. It was Liam Dick who came in and knocked him down. It's Shinkawa, the great linebacker, taken for a ride there. So Colin Cooper has Dyer Jones to his right. Here's Cooper, going to take it himself. Up the middle, spin move, and has nowhere to go as he gets back to the line of scrimmage. And it brings up a second down for Little Rock Christian Academy as we're under a minute to play in the first quarter. Ben Smiley came in to make the tackle. Nice job by the defensive front there for PA. Not a huge defensive line for the Bruins, outsized by quite a few pounds by the Christian offense, but able to stack it up and keep that for a no game. Cooper. Going to fake the handoff. Fade route left side. One-handed catch all the way down to the one. How about that? That was Corey Platt who went up with one hand and brought it in to get Little Rock Christian Academy inside the two-yard line and set up a potential go-ahead. I don't know if Yarnells gives that ice cream for plays yeah. in the state championship game for the sweetest play, but that should be one right there. What a play by Corey Platt, Jr. So now they've got a goal line set as they're going to go with a bunch set. Dyer Jones is to the right of Cooper. Going to fake the handoff. Excuse me, that was Corey Platt who was able to take it in. He was able to go. There's no indication from any official except for the one on the near side. Now it's a touchdown. They go Wildcat there. The eyes go with the running back, Corey Platt, who able to. There is a flag on the far side, it looks like. But I like the idea of Christian handing it off to their Big play receiver to finish off that drive. Sideline warning on the offense. There's no yardage penalty for that foul. That was Philip Cole with the penalty or with the call. And so now Little Rock Christian's in the end zone. It's 23 to 12. It's a nice play by Platt. It'll power his way into the end zone and cut the deficit to in half essentially. And now Christian's got a chance to attack on a couple more. Now Little Rock Christian going to come on and Kick the PAT is Isaiah Hankins, 61 of 62 on PATs this year. I have to run somebody on as that was Holt Chapel. Kick is up and it's good. And it's 23 to 13 with 15 seconds to play here in the first quarter. It's another big answer drive. I mean, Little Rock Christian is going to have to come up with a lot of these. There's another flag on the far sideline, but you need to answer the bell if you're the Warriors because you know PA is going to land some haymakers. Yeah. You've got to be able to get up off the mat and answer with answer yourself. Get the call. Sideline interference on the offense. It's the second occurred. It's five yard penalty assessed on the kickoff. It's really odd because a PAT. Well, the PAT, so the, the action's 25 yards away from where the players or coaches should be on the sideline, but you know, it's state championship game. We see crazy things happen. It is true. 15 seconds to play here in the first quarter. It's 23 13. Pulaski Academy leads Little Rock Christian Academy. Let's head down to Hayden Balgaby on the sidelines. Guys, we talked about how good Corey Platt Jr. is. We saw that one-handed Odell Beckham-like catch on the one-yard line. Coach Koyu nice enough to let him finish off the drive. He had six total touchdowns last week against Harrison, five on the ground, one through the air. Total package for Christian, keeping him in this ball game. Thank you, Hayden, and you're right. That one-handed catch may have been the play of the year for sure. Here's the kick by Little Rock Christian's Isaiah Hankins. It's a short kick at the 25 yard line and it'll be taken left side by Caleb Nichols and he'll be knocked down at the 45 yard line as Slate Wilkerson knocked him out and that's where Pulaski Academy will have it first and 10 with eight seconds to play here in the first quarter. That's what makes it so dangerous to have someone like Joe Hyman out deep. Little Rock Christian's trying to kick it away from him, so it's a short kickoff, and Nichols able to get the ball near midfield as PA takes over at their own 45. Should be the final play of the first quarter as there's two wide receivers to each side of the formation. 
Hyman's going to take the direct snap for Pulaski Academy. Works it around the left side and goes out of bounds. And I said that was going to be the last play. There's actually going to be one more as Anthony Pugh knocked him out with three seconds to play in the first quarter. We're having too much fun with this 45-minute <laughs> first quarter, so we're going to do it again. At least one uh, more play. If you don't have... What time's the second game today? 6.30? Uh, 6.30, yeah. We may not have time to clear the stadium. So it's three seconds to play. Charlie Pfizer in now at quarterback for Pulaski Academy as they've got three wide receivers in the formation to the near side. And I hand it off to Hyman. He's bottled up in the backfield. They're going to say he got back to the original line of scrimmage. And it was Gabe King who was able to come in and take him down. And that'll do it for the first quarter of play. As Pulaski Academy, they lead Little Rock Christian Academy 23 to 13. And you're watching the Centennial Bank State Football Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Hi, I'm Susie Everett, wishing you and your family a Merry Christmas and Happy Holiday Season. With our busy lives today, we often forget the greatest gift of Christmas. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. I hope all of us will take the time and share the love of Christ this season. May your holidays be filled with joy and blessings. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from all of us at Everett. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by... The Cherokee Nation, our people, our culture, our history, our future. To learn more, go to visitcherokeenation.com and say hello to the Cherokee Nation. You'll find us at the end of a lot of long country roads, covering over 60% of the great state of Arkansas to provide reliable power to over half a million homes, farms, and businesses. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, your local energy partners. John's Honda, your hometown dealer for sales and service of Honda motorcycles, ATVs, Honda generators, and Honda lawnmowers. Family owned and operated since 1967, John's Honda offers factory certified technicians and experienced sales staff. Farmers and Merchants Bank and the Bank of Fayetteville share the mission of Arkansas PBS to enrich and empower all Arkansans. Community, dignity, respect. That's what me banking is all about. More at mebanking.com. Second quarter action here from War Memorial Stadium as Pulaski Academy leads at 23-13 over Little Rock Christian Academy. And PA has the football to start the second quarter of play. As Pfizer's going to be in a quarterback, he's going to give it off to Hyman. And that Warrior defense is able to take him down after about a two-yard gain. It was Preston Davis. Nice job by Davis to track him down, getting a Hyman on the ground. A one-on-one's not easy, but to give credit to Davis there, a great play in space to force a fourth down. You've got a fourth down and six for Pulaski Academy. I'm going to say it's fourth and five on the scoreboard. Pfizer's in the shotgun all by himself. Pfizer looking to throw. Works right side. Has a man wide open all by himself down to the 32-yard line. Nice job by Caleb Nichols yeah. there. He was not open when Pfizer rolled to his right, but he's able to watch the defense kind of swarm up to the first receiver. Then Nichols finds a spot in the defense. Maybe we can see it here from the replay. Great job by Nichols keeping his eyes on the quarterback and helping him out, get him an outlet, out, outlet route in a first down. Lasky Academy trying to move quickly here in the start of the second quarter. Pfizer looked back over to Kevin Kelly to get the sign. Here's Pfizer looking to throw again. Going big ball. Has a man, but overthrows him. That time was trying to hook up with Jalen Witcher in the back of the end zone. And had him open. Going to bring up a second down for Pulaski Academy. Witcher did a nice job of finding a seam in the defense. And Little Rock Christian brought a little extra pressure and couldn't keep up with Witcher, but could not connect. Brings up a second down. Not many miscues in the passing game so far for Pulaski Academy. So it's second and 10, ball to 28-yard line. Here's Pfizer. 
Rowan left trying to find somebody. And he finds Hyman. Hyman working his way he past the first down sticks and gets knocked out of bounds at the 19 yard line. It was Landon Nelson who knocked him out. It was a nine yard pickup for Pulaski Academy to set up a first down and nine for the Bruins. Your job as a quarterback is really, really easy when you've got an outlet receiver like Hyman. Kind of mirrors the quarterback rolling to his left, able to pop free, hits him in the flat in a big game for the running back. They're going to split Hyman out to the left side, make him a wide receiver. Now they've got five wide receivers in the formation. Charlie Pfizer, the quarterback for Pulaski Academy. Looking to throw. And there's penalty flags all over the place as that time for Pulaski Academy, they were trying to hook up with their wide receiver, Ben Smiley. I think they're going to get Little Rock Christian's Ben Ridings there with a, either a hold or an interference. With the, that backhand around the hip caused the receiver to turn a bit, and they're going to catch that about every time. Pass interference on the defense. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. But if you're beat, might as well throw a hand out there and prevent a touchdown. You'll give up five or six yards as it's going to be a half the distance instead of giving up six points. So it's first and ten. Or first and goal, excuse me, as Pfizer has four wide receivers in the formation to the right side. Tunnel screen. They're able to hook up with Caleb Nichols, and he had nowhere to go. Picked up about a yard on the play as Slate Wilkerson came in and was able to make the stop. Nice job by Wilkerson to recognize screen and get his head around and find the receiver with the football and makes the play in the backfield. Second and. I feel like they can, I, get, a, they can get a first down. Yeah, I was about to say, well, they didn't originally have the chain set up just a moment ago. So, yeah, they're about four yards away from the first down marker. So it's second down and four. With the ball at the seven. Pfizer looking to throw. Has a man in the end zone. Touchdown. It was Jalen Witcher for the touchdown. It's a seven-yard touchdown pass, and Pulaski Academy extends their lead. There was no question where Pfizer was going with that football. He was staring down Witcher as soon as he got the football, just waiting for him to find a crease. And the Warrior defense, as soon as he sees him come open, fires a dart for the touchdown. Pulaski Academy coming on for the PAT with 9.51 to play in the second quarter. Kick is up. And it is good, and it's 30 to 13, Pulaski Academy on Little Rock Christian Academy. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Football Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Hi, Roger Scott for Big Red Stores. Big Red Stores is proud to support high school athletics and to sponsor these high school championship games. Over 40 Big Red Stores are located throughout Central Arkansas, each one staffed with our team members who have participated in games, marched in the band, or led the spirit teams in cheers. And now we are pleased to bring families, schools, and communities together. Big Red Stores, now more convenient than ever. Enjoy the games. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Enjoy heartwarming carols. Santa Claus is coming to town. Timeless classics. Silent night. And all of your holiday favorites. A blue, blue, blue Christmas. It's Christmas with Daniel O'Donnell. Today at 5.30. It's 30 to 13 with 9.51 to play here in the second quarter of play of the 5A state championship as Vaughn Selick is going to kick the onside kick and it goes right under the legs of a Little Rock Christian player and Pulaski Academy looks to have recovered. 
They found a spot with that Little Rock Christian Hands team that they like to attack every time. That's the third time already in a quarter and a couple minutes that Pulaski Academy has stolen a possession with an onside kick. That was Ben Smiley who recovered it. And, Bobby, you pointed something out just a moment ago. They keep kicking that onside kick to Keegan McCarver of Little Rock Christian every time. Yeah, they found a, they found a spot in that Little Rock Christian return team. I even believe the Warriors have made a couple changes on that return unit as well. But they find it, that one spot, and that's all it takes for a, a, a team or a special teams unit that's as experienced as PA is to get those extra possessions. And here, this is how things get out of control. So now Pulaski Academy going to come back on the field as Nolan Bruffett is going to be the quarterback for Pulaski Academy with 9.49 to play in the second quarter. We'll check in with Hayden Baumgabe here momentarily. Bruffett looks over to get the sign from Pulaski Academy head coach Kevin Kelly. I don't see that very often, but a delay of game on the PA offense. Delay of game on the offense. Five yard penalty. Main first down. Let's check in with Hayden real quick. Hayden, what's up? He has been as an offensive coordinator and as a head coach. He saw something on that last touchdown. He checked into that pass to Witcher, looked over. Pulaski Academy offense right now rolling. You mentioned the onside kids. Coach Kelly said they weren't going to get two onside kicks like they did last time these guys played. Well, he was right. They have three now. Thank you, Hayden. As Nolan Bruffett going to be back all by himself in the backfield with five wide receivers in the formation for Pulaski Academy. Pump fake goes across the middle looking big ball has his man. That's Joe Hyman all the way inside the 30 yard line. They're uh, going to officially spot him at the 28 as Keegan McCarver brought him down for Little Rock Christian Academy. A lot of times this offense is not complicated. It's first read and throw it to him. And it, obviously it works when you've got players like Hyman or Witcher. But that's how he's staring him down, waits for he finds the seam and perfect pass right between the linebacker and the safety. And quickly again, PA is inside the 30. 30 yard pickup for Pulaski Academy is Bruffett in the shotgun. Looking to find somebody. He's under in trouble and finally goes down after losing five yards on the play. That looked to be a busted play, a little miscommunication in the backfield. It was Ben Ridings who brought him down for Little Rock Christian to bring up second down. You can be the first to know what's happening at Arkansas PBS and get the latest sports updates. All you have to do is just download the Engage Arkansas PBS app today for exclusive content. With second down and 15, ball at the 33-yard line as Bruffett stands in the shotgun. Looking to throw. Goes across the middle and throws it behind his intended target, Dylan Allison, for Pulaski Academy. A lot of bodies there. Oh. Two receivers, three defenders in the same area. It's this dangerous pass. And luckily for the PA offense, that one falls harmlessly to the turf. So now you've got a third down and 15. And once again, you know Pulaski Academy, is gonna, they're going to use all four downs. But boy, if somehow Little Rock Christian could get a stop right here, that would be huge for this defense. Yeah, they need, they need to get some momentum going their direction. Here's Bruffett. Big pass. Wide open. Right side. He's going to walk in for the touchdown. It's a 33-yard pitch and catch. He was wide open, a little miscommunication there in the defense, but we do have a flag on the field. We'll have to check the laundry as the flag comes back at the other original line of scrimmage. It was Nick Giesel who was able to get the touchdown reception. Come on in downfield on the offense. And so that is going to negate that touchdown as there was an ineligible man downfield for Pulaski Academy. I had to look down, Nick Giesel. That's his first rece reception of the ball game, and he was wide open down on that sideline. Yeah, a little miscommunication with the offense. Didn't line up properly. One of the receivers was covered up. And that's why that flag brings back the touchdown pass. So now you've got a third down and really long. Make it third and 20 to be exact. Ball at the 38-yard line. Rough, it takes a snap. A throw right side almost intercepted and we've got a penalty flag down as the ball was almost intercepted that time by Corey Platt for Little Rock Christian. But now let's check the penalty flag. Seen a lot of flags in the secondary today. Pass interference on the defense. 15 yard penalty.
Third down. So it's not going to be an automatic first down, but what's third and 20 is going to turn into third and five, and that's the third or fourth time Little Rock Christian's been on the wrong end of a secondary penalty, and I think you and I both looked at each other that way. Not really sure about that call, but they're paid more than we are, so they can they can do that. Well, I mean, I, it, it happened so fast. There was a lot of people down in that area that uh, we'd have to go back and look at the replay on that, but either way, it's a third and five for Pulaski Academy. 8.35 to play second quarter. It's a tough, tough break for the Warrior defense. Now, how do you respond to it? Here's Bruffett looking to throw. It's in and out of the hands of Allison. And now it brings up a fourth and five on the coverage. It was Luke Lee for Little Rock Christian. Really nice job by Lee to get all over the receiver, but keep the hands off after that five yard buffer zone within the line of scrimmage and step for step with the receiver, Allison, to force the fourth down. It's fourth and five, ball to 23 yard line. 8.30 to play here in the second quarter. Pulaski Academy leading this thing 30 to 13. Owen Bruff at the quarterback for Pulaski Academy. He's going to spread the formation out as he'll have three wide receivers set up on that left side of the formation, two to the right. Here's Bruffett looking to throw. Has a man wide open. It's caught. Walks in the end zone. Knocked into the end zone. Touchdown. It was Cooper White. A 23-yard touchdown reception for Cooper White. And Pulaski Academy is up 36-13. A great read by the quarterback, Bruffett, just waiting for his receiver to come open. We've seen him hit the corner out a few times, finds the hole in the defense right before the defender. Number one, Landon Nelson for Christian can get there. A perfect pitch and catch, and the Bruins are back in the end zone. On to kick the extra point is going to be Vaughn Selick, the junior. Already 287 yards of offense for P.A. And I believe yeah. last year they set the state record for most offense in a game or close to it. Yes. Encroachment on the defense. Half the distance to the goal. Or in a state championship game, I should preface that. Well, they, uh, you know, it came out this last week that Pulaski Academy's offense was one of the most productive offenses in the country this year. Um, and so um, that made a lot of headlines this week, but they're showing it right now as. Uh, they have between and really, you know, you talked about it between Charlie Fizer and Nolan Bruffett. You would think that you'd have some weakness, but either they're both really good quarterbacks as here's a pass by Joe Hyman in and out of the hands after they tried to go for two. And that was Liam Dick who they were trying to get the hands, get the uh, ball into the hands of Liam. And so now it's 36 to 13 with 824 to play here in the second quarter. Let's check in with Hayden Balgavy on the sideline. Could uh, you could see Kevin Kelly fired up to see that touchdown. Another strike uh, that Pulaski Academy is able to get this offense rolling. I don't think he could have dreamed of getting three onside kicks in the first half. He said this week we're not going to get all those onside kicks that made this game a blowout earlier in the season. But so far it has been exactly what the Bruins have wanted on special teams, on offense, and their defense playing pretty good as well. Even though Corey Platt Jr., he's an explosive guy. Again, we said he had six touchdowns last week. See if he can get this. Warriors offense back in this ball game before half about eight minutes. Yeah, and the first step is going to be recovering the onside kick, and that's been the, the biggest problem so far for Little Rock Christian. Correct me if I'm wrong here. I believe all three times PAs recovered the onside kick, they've gone down and scored. Have. So you're talking at least 18 points, add the conversions and the extra points, and that's the difference in this contest. Right did not now. score on the first one. They remember right, the, fumble. the very first yeah. onside kick. They did, they did not score on that one. But I said, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. so it was. It does happen. And that one just took a, a big time hop. It was nobody's fault. He just took a, a weird hop and Pulaski Academy was right there. It was Cooper White who came up with the onside kick for Pulaski Academy. Now the fourth onside recovery for Pulaski Academy. They changed it all yeah, up until this point. Every onside kick has been on the ground. That time they go with the skipper. The big hop there was perfectly executed. Got to give a lot of credit to the kicker there, Selick. Uh, perfect hop and PA like business again. You know, and, and for as much as we see onside kicks in, in high school football and in the NFL and college, and nine times out of ten, they never get them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And But then you watch here Pulaski Academy. They've just, they, they have, you know, 
been experts at trying to figure that out, figure out the onside kick. Yeah, what they do is they do a great job of scouting. I mean, you you look at the team who's going to line up against you. Now, granted, Little Rock Christian, they face these guys, so they kind of know what they're going to do as far as an onside recover. They've got so many formations and variations of the onside kick. That, I mean, they've perfected it. I mean, that's I think that's the best word you can use, RJ. You said it, is they perfected the art of the onside kick because they do it so often. They don't have special teams periods in practice. They don't. They have, they have a kicker who's off on the side working on onside kicks all day and it's clear because they're really good at it. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. And so now Pulaski Academy will have it first and 10 at uh, the Little Rock Christian 44 yard line with 823 to play here in the second quarter. I know we, 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 this is the fourth onside kick. I remember it was about six years ago. Uh, I was doing a, a Pulaski Acad Academy game in Cabot and they won they got five straight onside kicks to start, start the, the game. to start the game. Yeah. Yeah. They've got they're a 20 oh, I believe it was 28 nothing before Cabot's mm -hmm. offense even hit the field. Yeah. And, and that's what this is built on. This is built on jumping on you early and making you work from behind. Here's Pfizer, the quarterback for Pulaski Academy. Has a wide open man. That's Allison. Spin move down the inside the 15 yard line. They're going to say he's down at the 14 yard line. They're not it's, making it complicated, RJ. Oh, no, it's a 30 yard pickup from Pfizer to Allison. They're saying if Little Rock Christian, you want to go bump and run, we're just going to run simple go routes. Not a lot of progression there from Pfizer. Just waits for his receiver to get behind the defense, tosses it out there, another big game. So now they're going to send five wide receivers in the formation as Pfizer will be in the shotgun by himself. Pfizer is going to take the snap, looks to throw, has a man overthrows him. Throws it a little too high for Dylan Allison. And that'll bring up second down. You know, I was looking at the numbers for Pulaski Academy, and no one bruff it right now is 12 of 17 for 180 yards and two touchdowns. Charlie Pfizer, 7 of 8 for 124 yards and two touchdowns. Yeah, the, the passing game is is coming up aces, and that's why you haven't seen them run the football. Probably don't have more than a handful of rushing attempts up to this point. I know they had the Hyman touchdown run earlier in this game, but when the passing game's working this well, why get away from it? Here's a pitch to Hyman. Works it on the right side. Still on his feet. And Joe Hyman just walks into the end zone. It was like bumper pool for him. 14 yards to walk into the end zone. It's 42-13. Yeah, everything they're doing, when they get away from the pass game, the quick pitch, it's not real good tackling there by Little Rock Christian. you got to wrap up a player like Hyman, bounces off the would-be shoulder tackle, and number six back in the end zone. And there's a lot of time left in this football game, RJ, but the route may be on. So Selick on to kick the extra point for Pulaski Academy. And it is right down Broadway and it's 43 to 13, 742 to play here in the second quarter. Hayden Balgabe is on the sideline. Hayden, boy, I tell you what, this one kind of got out of hand early. RJ, you said it right there, it's getting out of hand, and PA fans on this sideline are fired up for their Bruins. But at the same time, Coach Koyu, he is one of the most positive coaches you will find in high school football. He's still encouraging his Warriors to keep on going because, as you mentioned, these are two dynamic offenses, and I know this game looks lopsided right now. Bobby, you mentioned it. Little Rock Christian, when they get the ball, when they can get on offense, they can score in a hurry. So hopefully for the Warriors side, they can put a couple of points up here. And, RJ, i got to say, easy on Cabot, man. Come on, that, was, that, was just a, that was a rough day for the alma mater. That was just a rough just a rough afternoon. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I've uh, ever since I said that, I've had a couple texts going, "Hey, let's not bring up bad memories for those Cab Cabot Panthers." But, uh, uh, but you know what, guys? I was just you know, Hayden kind of hit it perfectly. We've got 7:42 to play in the second quarter. A lot of football and, left. A lot of football left to be played. You got, you really do have, for what it may be, you do have a good defense that can get stops with Little Rock Christian, and they do have a good offense. Here's another onside kick. That is going to be caught, and that time it was Ben Ridings who was able to pick it up and get the onside kick. But I, I really think that if they can get some stops, the biggest thing is recovering the onside kicks. You're exactly right. You've got to do the little things first, and that's the first step to it right there with Ridings covering the onside kick. And I'm just going to throw this out there just in case anybody wants to know it. Save it for later. 1949 Stuttgart scored 73 points in the championship game. That's the Arkansas record as PA sits with 42 with Two and a half quarters left, 43, excuse me. First and 10 at the 48-yard line. All right, Christian, as Dyer Jones has it, he'll be able to pick up about four yards on the play as 
it was Romello Bell who came in to make the stop for Pulaski Academy. To bring up second down. The second, third, and fourth most points in a state championship game scored by PA, including last year. Oh, wow. They scored 63. Still a lot of football left to be played, though. That's why I brought it up. Yeah. Second down for Little Rock Christian. Take the handoff. They work it right side. That's into the hands of Corey Platt. Stiff arm, still on his feet. Gets past the first down marker and is taken down at the 32-yard line in Pulaski Academy territory. It was Liam Dick who came in and was able to take him down. Take a look at this stiff arm. This is big time right here. Number four, this puts the defender on his back, extends, and extends the arm, moving the Warrior offense inside the 40. That's first and 10, ball at the 37. Here's a pass, works it right side into the hands of Eli Cooper. And Cooper gets one yard away from the first down for Christian. You know when Christian's offense has had the football, they've had success, they've moved the ball. Problem is, as we keep alluding to it, is recovering that onside kick. If Little Rock Christian can start to double up their possessions, maybe they can get back into this contest. Here's another pass, it works it right side, that's into the hands of Platt. And Platt gets the first down and a couple more as it was McKinney who made the stop for Pulaski Academy. And so it's now first and 10 as the ball's at the 25 yard line. Little Rock Christian working very quickly as we're at 625 and counting here in the second quarter. Well, nice job by the PA defense to jump on Platt as soon as he caught the football, but as second and short able to pick up the first down. And Little Rock Christian again on the move. Colin Cooper is in the shotgun with Dyer Jones to his left. Fakes the handoff, works it left side into the hands of Eli Cooper. And Cooper looks like he may have fumbled the football. There's no, no official word from the officials. I think the near side officials point to the ground. They're gonna say it's gonna bring up second down. And they're saying he was down by contact. The body got bent up, hit by a couple different defenders from different directions. Good to see him get up and to be able to walk back to the huddle. Also a big break for Christian to say that was ruled down by contact. Six yard pickup for Little Rock Christian. Now we've got a whistle and timeout and they may try they may try to review this one. Looks like there were a few crews coming out to the field and see maybe we can get a look at it and and see what the what they see. Uh, well the the call on the field is that it was he was down. That was that was the call and so they're going to look to that the ball did pop out. We saw the ball pop out but whether he was down or not, that's what they're going to be looking at. Yeah, the replay official came came to us earlier. He's under review. The replay official came to us earlier and said that the fumble on the opening drive was not conclusive, so that's why that one stayed as called on the field, and now we'll have to wait and see what this one is determined to be. I haven't had very many reviews over the first weekend of state championship games. We've had two here uh, so far in this one. Yeah. That's, that's kind of how we want it, though. We want to, you know, big time game changing plays to be reviewed, but you want these games to roll. You want to be able to get into the flow of a football game, not have to worry about anything as far as excessive reviews or stoppages of play as we finally get a look at it here. We'll have to wait and see. We'll see where he's at with the knee is or an elbow. And. Ooh. You can't see that left knee. And so that's going to be the question. Is the left knee down before the pop football pops out? And so, see, his, his rear end almost hit the ground, which would have put him down, Bobby. Yeah, that, but they held him up. Yeah, that second angle is probably going to be the best look at it. And you, you mentioned the rear. I thought I was looking left knee. That was clearly not on the ground. So the posterior, the gluteus maximus, was that, was that on the turf or not? <laughs> I mean, it's true, though. I mean, well, we can think about we'll, it. We'll take one more look at it. So it's great camera work here. You're gonna roll that, and then as he get, and you're right, he got bent up, and so right there, mm. I, it looked like there may be a little daylight between the gluteus. And but the it's got to be. It, they, it's be conclusive. They, they have to know without a shadow of a doubt whether he was down or not, or the or the call on the field will stand. Correct. And so the that's what the officials are looking at, and and so if the longer it takes, it means that they're trying to figure out if there's if they can absolutely see it 100%. I think that, that's the one thing we always have to pay attention to in replay is without a shadow of a doubt, it has to be conclusive yeah. evidence to overturn the call on the field. Let's go down to Hayden Balgavy, who's on the sideline. Hayden, did you get a, ch uh, a chance to look at that one? 
I got a really solid look at it. It looked to me like the ball was just coming out. As Bobby, you sort of mentioned, they held him up a little bit. He was bent in an awkward way backwards, and I thought the ball just came out right before the knee touched the ground. But again, as they're going to remind you on these high school replay officials is that this has to be conclusive. We're not going to break it down. We're not going to look left and right. But like it, it is, if it's not conclusive, then the call on the field is going to stand. So I would be surprised. You see the Little Rock Christian offense still on the field. The PA defense is still on the field. But to me, just in an instant reaction, it looked like that ball was out. Thank you, Hayden. As Philip Cole is, and this is going to be a big one too for Little Rock Christian. We mentioned their offense has had success when they're on the field, have to be able to take advantage of this drive as they're in the red zone. Don't forget, if you want a copy of this state championship game or any of the two last weekend, maybe the two coming up, you go to mnmproductions.net to place your order. We had two good ones last week as Bryant's repeated for the third time as 7A state champions. And then shocker, shocker, the Greenwood Bulldogs take home another 6A title. First year head coach Chris Young, congrats to him. He and his father, one of only four duos to be state champions as head coaches. Here's Philip Cole with the review. The ruling on the field stands. PA will lose their timeout and their challenge. Yeah, I mean, look, it, it was a good challenge on Pulaski Academy's part. And, and I know there's probably people sitting at home going, I saw daylight, but you know, when you're, when you're in this replay booth over here, I mean, they've got to make without a shadow of a doubt, like you talked about, that it was it was down. And I, I just don't think they had the right angle for that. Two, two really close reviews that we've already had here today. So here's Little Rock Christians, Colin Cooper in the shotgun. They give it to Dyer Jones, works to the left side. Dyer Jones just rumbling out to the 15-yard line. That's very close to the first down marker as Jalen McKinney brought him down. And they are going to say it's a first down. So Little Rock Christian. Back at first and 10 as the ball's at the 15-yard line. Nice job by 67. Connor Whipple to lead the way. The offensive lineman for Little Rock Christian gets him a new set of downs. So Cooper lines up Dyer Jones beside him in the shotgun. A fake the handoff. Works it left side into the end zone and in and out of the hands of his intended target that time. It was Corey Platt who had it go in and out. He had double coverage on him, but it was good coverage by Joe Hyman and Jalen Witcher. That was a good throw, just even better coverage, though. You mentioned the double coverage there by P.A. Half Platt bracketed. And a nice job by Witcher to come underneath the route, and just get a hand on it and knock it free. I think I said that it was uh, Hyman. It was actually Cameron Mercer who was on that coverage. Now here's the handoff to Dyer Jones. He works his way up the middle, picks up a couple on the play to bring up third down for Little Rock Christian. As Dale Panaggio is going to take him down. We have four down territory here for Little Rock Christian. You got to believe. Third down and eight. The ball's at the 13 yard line. We're under five to play here in the second quarter of the 5A state championship game. Colin Cooper. Uh, hand it off to Dyer Jones. Works his way up the middle. Able to pick up about four yards on the play to bring up fourth down. Jalen McKinney once again making the tackle on Dyer Jones. Yeah, you know, you, you run that play, RJ, knowing that you've got another down to, to play with. But one thing to pay attention to, really moving on, didn't see it so much to start this contest, but Pulaski Academy is double teaming Corey Platt everywhere he goes. So he's going to have a defensive back and a safety over the top wherever he lines up. So it's going to be tough for Little Rock Christian to get him the football, at least right now, as they stand the ball in the red zone. So it's fourth down and four. Ball at the nine yard line. Christian's going to have to hurry to get this one off. I think they're going to call a timeout as there's five seconds on the play clock, and that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to walk off the field and talk this one over with 3.51 to play in the second quarter. It's 43 13, Pulaski Academy on top, but Little Rock Christian, they are getting closer and closer to that end zone. Let's head back down the sideline and talk to Hayden Balgaving. Yeah, you guys alluded to it. Coach Koyu looked like the offense wasn't exactly sure what they wanted to do there on fourth down, so he's going to take the safe route, take a timeout. There's still 351 left in this half, but this fourth down, huge for Christian to make this thing a ball game just before halftime. But it, you, you want to make sure you get the right play call in. Again, the PA defense also getting together over here, so 
This is a big play for Little Rock Christian. I mean, this could be a huge momentum swing if they're going to fight back in this thing. Yeah, it's a, almost a much needed score, almost score it necessary here for the Warriors if they want to get back into it. Hey, don't go anywhere. Coming up, it's the Arkansas PBS halftime show with David Basil and former Razorback and Chicago Bear James Rouse as they discuss lifelong importance of education. Then meet Pulaski Academy running back Joe Hyman, who talks about his role on the team, his coach, and how PA plays the game. It's all coming up next on the Arkansas PBS halftime show. The Baz is everywhere. He, he really is. Yeah, I think he's in Fayetteville watching the, uh, the Razorback game right now. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's not pretty. It's 351 left here in the second. Fourth down and four for Little Rock Christian. Colin Cooper has Dyer Jones to his right. He'll roll out, looking to throw. Has a man, threw it behind him. Trying to hook up with Eli Cooper, and he threw it behind him. If he, if he is able to hook up with him, that's going to walk him for a touchdown. Just behind his receiver, and he rolled the pocket. I like the play call, set up perfectly. Receiver wide open in the flat, but just can't connect, and that, that's a missed opportunity that Little Rock Christian really can't afford. So Pulaski Academy takes over on downs. Ball's at the nine-yard line. Ah, it's a big stop, though, for the PA defense. Got to give them a lot of credit. They bent, but they did not break there, and now they get their offense a chance to add to their 30-point lead before we hit the half. So it's first and 10, ball to nine. Miser back in at quarterback for Pulaski Academy. They're going to hand it off. Comes around the left side. That time for PA. Carrying the ball was Zach Horsey. Slate Wilkerson was able to knock him down after about a one yard pickup. So all the stats just flash up there. PA's averaging almost nine yards a play. They've done that for most of the season. So anytime you get a one or two yard gain, you call that a win as a defense. Second down and nine for Pulaski Academy. Eyes are looking to throw. Has a man across the middle trying to hook up with Cooper White. It's incomplete. Brings up third down and nine. Really good coverage there by Christian's defense. They were able to take away the first read for Pfizer. Caused the quarterback to go through his progressions and forces an errant pass. Pulaski Academy on third down, four of seven so far today. On the year for Pulaski Academy, they've been 50% on third down. A lot of times as an offense, you're hoping for 35 to 40 percent. You're talking about one who converts it every other time. Here's Pfizer in the shotgun. Looking to run, has a man. That's out to Dylan Allison. And Allison's going to get past the first down marker and step out at the 21-yard line. It was Keegan McCarver who knocked him out of bounds. And that'll bring up first and 10. It's a nice route combination. Had two receivers, one right at the sticks, one beyond them that were breaking free. And Feinster takes the easy pass and picks up a first down, keeps the drive moving. Real one left here in the second. As Charlie Pfizer has his running back, Joe Hyman, right beside him. He hands it off left side. Hyman's going to get out of bounds. We've got a penalty flag in the backfield. It's never good for the offense when the flag comes flying in from behind. Penalty flag is down at the 20 yard line. Ivan went out of bounds at the 27 yard line. Here's the call. Holding on the offense. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Well, that's nullified as it's going to bring up first down again for Pulaski Academy, but the ball is going to be spotted all the way back at the 10-yard line. First and 21. It's going to remember holding at the high school level, going to be from the spot of the foul, not from the original line of scrimmage, so that's why that's an 11-yard penalty instead of 10. We can't make fun of their math here. Oh. Keyword is here. First and 21, ball at the 10. Three wide to the near side. Iser with Hyman to his left. Iser rolling left under pressure. He's going to run and still on his feet out to the 30 yard line. That's a big pickup. That time for Pfizer's. He got knocked out of bounds by Corey Platt. It's a pickup of 20 yards on the play. 
Well, and it'll bring up second down. One of the few times we're going to see Pulaski Academy not throw the football or get it out of the quarterback's hands within a second or two, able to tuck it down and pick up majority of that. Actually, they give him the first down, so a gain of 21 for Pfizer. Yeah, they originally said it was going to be second down. They looked across and moved the chain, so it's first and 10 now for Pulaski Academy as the ball's at the 31-yard line. Here's a pass, left side. Hooks up with Jalen Witcher. Witcher out in the running lane. He gets knocked out of bounds out in Little Rock Christian territory. It was taken down by Ben Ridings. That was just a numbers game, RJ. They had more blockers than Christian had defenders. Swing it out there and make your defenders make a tackle in space. PA gets another big gain, and they're out near midfield after picking up, was that, 40 yards on yeah. two plays. So it's first and 10 for Pulaski Academy. Pfizer quickly out to the right side. Gets into the hands of his wide receiver that time. It was Charlie Barker. Nice play by Miles Howard, the defensive back for Little Rock Christian. If he doesn't make that tackle, we may be off to the races for the Bruins, but Howard out there to get a hand on him. A limit to, to a gain of two. So it's second down and eight. Here's the handoff. This to Hyman, who's able to keep his step, working left and right, carrying folks all the way down to the 34-yard line. It's really impressive what he can do with the football in his hands. Finally, Miles Howard was able to bring him down. And that's another first down for Pulaski Academy. Makes two or three miss with his feet. Carries another defender for an extra few yards, and he's having himself a heck of a day. The 14 yard pickup that time for Hyman. Here's Pfizer looking to throw. Goes across the middle. Big ball. Touchdown. Dylan Allison for the score. It's a 34 yard touchdown. And we've got penalty flags down back at the line of scrimmage. Two flags right in the same spot at the line of scrimmage. This one may be coming back. The offensive line has been outstanding today so far for Pulaski Academy. And this may be the first call to go against those guys, but they've made nothing but a clean pocket for their quarterbacks. Holding on the offense. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. It's the second hold on this drive for Pulaski Academy. You know one thing, Bobby, I you know, you see quarterbacks at the college level and you never see quarterbacks stand flat footed when, mm -hmm. when they're in the but if you think about it. They always do at PA. They always do. If you go back to Freddie Knighton, if you go to Lane Hatcher, I mean, literally all quarterbacks that, that play at Pulaski Academy stand flat-footed. Yeah. It's, it's the one thing that every other school in the country doesn't teach. Yeah. Kevin Kelly obviously does things very differently, but you can't complain with the results. And the offense looks really complex, and I know I've said it a couple times, but it's not. It's, it's one read, throw the football, and obviously he's, he's really good at the numbers game. So they'll have four wide to the near side. It's first and 20. Pfizer going to keep it himself. And he'll get knocked out of bounds by Slate Wilkerson. Bring up second down for Pulaski Academy. It's about half of that penalty back. You know, PA's not worried about the clock. There's a minute 16 left here in this first half. And they're just focused on putting some points on the board before we go into the half. So it was a five yard pickup for Pulaski Academy. Iser's got four wide receivers to the right side. Here's a pass to Nichols. Nichols gets it inside the 35 yard line down to the 34. Preston Davis made the tackle as they get back to the original line of scrimmage. So it's gonna be third down and 10 as it was a five yard pickup for Pulaski Academy. You know, Nichols is the one cog in this offense. We haven't said his name a whole lot today. 57 catches, 500 yards, and five touchdowns on the season. Relatively quiet first half, but all it takes is one big play to change that. Third and 10. Fies are looking to throw. Across the middle. Has a man. That's White. White goes left side, picks up the first down, takes it to the 20-yard line. I'm just waiting for his receiver to come open in the, in the zone. Able to hit him with it. Another first down as a Little Rock Christian player is still down on the turf. 14-yard pickup for Pulaski Academy. And as you said, there is a warrior down 
on that far hash mark over on the other side with 33 seconds to play here in the first half. Pulaski Academy leads at 43-13. You mentioned the third down numbers. Really, really good for Pulaski Academy. The red zone numbers even better. Four for four today. But what they were able to do on first and second down was so critical right there. They didn't try to get all 20 back on the first play. Quarterback sweep, little screen pass, and all of a sudden what we first and 21 now turns into a third and 10 and able to pick it up there. Good crowd on hand today here at War Memorial Stadium as social distancing uh, rules are in place. Every other bleacher is taken up, but, but there's still a, a great crowd on hand for this 5A state championship game. And we knew the numbers would be down a little bit that we saw that last week with 7A. The year before there was 18,000 when Bryant played North Little Rock. Well, the, at the state championship games this year, the capacity is capped at 18,000. So yeah. the number of tickets available, not quite as readily available. And of course, that means they're all watching on TV right now. So don't get nervous. No, I'm, I, I'm good. I appreciate it. It's me. I get nervous when the red light comes on. <laughs> We're still working. I, I couldn't quite see it. Uh, I guess it's Gabe King who's down over at Little Rock for Little Rock Christian. He's up to walk off under his own power. So already got a big knee brace on the right knee, big elbow brace on the left side. Toughen it out. Bobby, you were an offensive lineman over at UCA. Did you have all the knee braces and I did. Uh, well, it was mandatory. Yeah, the, the, every offensive lineman had both knee braces. Really? And yeah, they fit you as soon as you walk on campus. So first and ten. Here's Pfizer just a shovel pass to to Hyman straight up the middle. We had multiple penalty flags down, and he takes it all the way to the ten yard line. On the tackle is Ben Ridings for Little Rock Christian. We'll see what the penalty flags are. I think they're going to go talk with Pulaski Academy's coaches. Holding in the offense. Yep. 10 yard penalty. That was set up minus the hold there at the point of contact and you know, been, been kind of complimentary of the offensive line for PA and back to back holding calls taking a little bit of that out of the way but obviously trying to set up the screen pass and got caught holding. 29 seconds to play here in the first half. Balls at the 30 yard line it's first and 20. They're going to have four wide receivers in the formation to the near side. Here's Pfizer looking to throw. Steps up in the pocket. Now rolls right. As a man, it's intercepted. It's intercepted at the 19-yard line. And that time it was Corey Platt who came up to make the interception for Little Rock Christian. A great play defensively by Corey Platt to shut that one down. Able to just keep his eyes on the quarterback and Platt still down on the sideline, but just kind of dropped back in the zone, read the quarterback and able to make the play. Stepped right in front of that one and that's the... Took a big shot on the sideline from the quarterback, Pfizer. That's the first interception for Charlie Pfizer in this game. And so now with 21 seconds left here in the first half, Little Rock Christian will have the opportunity to try to go down and score. It's now two turnovers. Got to remember the fumble on the first offensive play of the game. And that Pulaski Academy gave up. And really all season long, they've been in the red when it comes to turnover margin. Problem is they get those possessions back because of the, on or the onside kicks. So Colin Cooper, the quarterback, Going to roll out to the right side. He's got a man. Man, that's Isaiah Hankins. Hankins trying to get to that first down marker. Going to take it all the way out to the 30-yard line. Clock's going to roll with eight seconds. I don't think that. I guess they are going to try to stop it. With five seconds, it was Cameron Mercer who came up to make the stop for Pulaski Academy. Don't forget, we'll hear from Coach Kevin Kelly. Just a few moments. So they head to the locker room. We've got one more play before we get to that. If you're a Little Rock Christian here, of course, you want to try to create something, but you've got to avoid the, the disaster. You can't turn the football over. No, you're exactly right. With five seconds left, it's 43-13. Pulaski Academy leads it. By the way, you didn't mention anything. I, one thing about both these schools, they both got great uniform combos from game to game. Pulaski Academy came out with the 
the powder blue helmets today. You don't see those very often. No, you don't. You know, you know a little more. They've got the, the Navy helmets. They've got gold helmets. They've got a little, little option, which is crazy to think about it at a high school level. But you know, they've got the American flag shield on the side of the helmets. And go out and might as well look pretty. Was it so, you know, look good, feel good, feel good, play good? What they say? Yes. Okay, so. I like it because they're really easy to read, the numbers. Yes. I'm getting old. So, Little Rock Christian with five seconds left. He's going to have Colin Cooper in the shotgun. Final play in the first half, and he throws it behind his intended target, and there's still one second left here in the, in the quarter. So, with the play that didn't work right there because they were off, off target, they're going to try it again here yeah. with one second to play. Run it again. Well, the first time these two squads met this season, it was a 60 to 28 win. The PA won back in week eight. Obviously, it's going to take at least 44 points if Little Rock Christian wants to pull this one out. But here's Cooper going to send it left side to Walker Wright. White is going to take it and finally be tackled by Jalen Witcher, and that's going to do it for the first half as Pulaski Academy is going to have a halftime lead of 43 to 13. Hayden Balgavy is down the sideline. to get with Coach Kevin Kelly after he, he's going to talk to uh, Coach. Yeah, we got Coach coming up right here. Coach Kelly, great offensive first half. You get four onside kicks, 43 points. How you feeling? Well, I mean, I feel good, but we had a chance to, to put the mercy roll on and nobody's ever come back from that right there. So I'm a little upset that we didn't finish that. Got a chance to put them away, never give a good a good team a chance they didn't deserve, and we gave it to them. So I hate that. Uh, I'm proud of how we're playing. I mean, 43-13 against a super well-coached team, very athletic crew that's ran through everybody after that one loss, and, and I'm pretty pleased where we are now. And, you know, if you'd have told me 43-13 at the beginning of the game, I'd have taken it at halftime. Coach, thank you so much. Best of luck in the second half. Really appreciate it. Guys, a very happy Kevin Kelly up until that late interception right there by Charlie Pfizer. But again, hard to be mad at a 30-point lead at the break. Yeah, thank you very much. Hayden Baumgavey on the sidelines here at War Memorial Stadium. Let's go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we'll have everything going on in our halftime as Pulaski Academy. They lead it 43-13. And you're watching the Centennial Bank State Football Championships in Arkansas PBS Sports. first car, to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service. Real people. Back to War Memorial Stadium. It's 43 to 13. Pulaski Academy leads in the 5A state championship game. Bobby Swalford, I'm RJ Hawk. Is we're at the half right now, and Bobby, it was uh, it was all Pulaski Academy there in the first half. Yeah, we knew that Little Rock Christian was going to have to weather the storm. You lose by 32 points in the first meeting. We've seen crazy things happen in a rematch in a state championship game, but early on, Pulaski Academy scored. Got the onside kick, scored again, took the momentum, took the air out of the stadium as far as the Little Rock Christian side and really haven't looked back. And you go back to those onside kicks, really, Christian had a lot of momentum it there did. in the first half, but it was the onside kicks that just really sucked the air out of that balloon. Yeah, the first quarter and a half, Little Rock Christian had a ton of success moving the football, handing the football off to Dyer Jones, moving the ball, but once they 
couldn't get the football back. It was score, onside kick, score again, and it really snowballed on them, and that's why they're down 30 at the break. You look at the uh, quarterback tandem for Pulaski Academy. Nolan Bruff at 12 of 17, 180 yards, two touchdowns. Then you've got Charlie Fizer, 12 of 16, 175 yards, two touchdowns and an interception. Really, I mean, both those quarterbacks – Doing really, doing a really good job. Yeah, it's one thing. It's kind of a pick your poison as we take a look at some of those first half highlights. You think about Joe Hyman, a 2,000 yard rusher. You've got to worry about stopping him first. Well, Pulaski Academy says, okay, you want to stack the box and go man to man. We're going to throw it on you. 355 yards passing in that first half for PA, including that big one to Joe Hyman. And when on the other side, Little Rock Chris, you got to give. Uh, credit where credit's due. J.B. and Dyer Jones, 14 carries, a net of 86 yards and a touchdown so far. He's been a workhorse for them. Yeah, and they, they needed that. They're, they're going to need a 200-yard performance from him. They needed a big game from uh, Corey Platt. You see the great catch he made there right near the goal line. They needed those big days, but they also needed a big day from their special teams, and they haven't gotten that to the first quarter, well, the first half, excuse me. It'll be an interesting uh, development in the second half. I know right now for Pulaski Academy, Liam Dick leads the way with six tackles and Gabe King as well as Slate Wilkerson and Luke Lee all leading tackles for Little Rock Christian as uh, they all have five tackles apiece. Here are your first half stats. Uh, and really, when you look at it, 435 total yards of offense for the Bruins, 167 for the Warriors. Rushing yards are about even, 87 for the Warriors, 80 for the Bruins. But passing yards, that's where it's the, the difference because the Bruins, 355 total yards in the first half, while Little Rock Christian has 80. And then look at the first downs, 20-9, yep. to nine, time of possessions, really not that different between the two teams. But Pulaski Academy just really working it on you with 20 first downs. Yeah, they're doing a nice job of staying on the field to one thing that we talked about Little Rock Christian's offense needed to do, extended drive, stay on the field, keep the PA offense on the sideline. Well, PA's done a great job of keeping their offense on the field. 20 first downs and 24 minutes of action is pretty impressive. Well, it is a uh, full second half. I, you know, you kind of mentioned it, that uh, that was a really long first half. Yes, it was. So we, uh, we could have like a five-hour 5A state championship Stop game. It. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are going to take a break. When we come back, David Basil is going to join the broadcast and uh, have a halftime guest as you're watching the Centennial Bank State Football Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Hi, I'm Susie Everett, wishing you and your family a Merry Christmas and Happy Holiday Season. With our busy lives today, we often forget the greatest gift of Christmas. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. I hope all of us will take the time and share the love of Christ this season. May your holidays be filled with joy and blessings. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from all of us at Everett. Welcome to the Halftime Show. It's another Championship Saturday on Arkansas PBS. I'm your host, David Basil, from the beautiful Arkansas Sports Hall of Fame. We're glad you're here with us. Coming up, R.J. Hawk will introduce us to a standout student athlete in the 5A classification, and we'll get an update on a young female kicker we met a few seasons ago. But first, it's my pleasure to welcome someone who traveled a very successful path from high school to the U of A to the NFL and to the world of business. Former Razorback and Chicago Bear and my old teammate, James Rouse. Thanks for being here with us, James. Thanks for having me. You know, this is always a special time of the year when high school players and teams work hard and get to War Memorial for a state championship and that's exactly what you did in 1984 with the Parkview Patriots and it was you and Keith Jackson, Ricky Williams and others. What do you remember about that game? Well I remember about that game is that you know we went in heavy favorite. Um, we were 12 and 0. I think uh, Southside was 7 and 7 so the expectations were that Parkview is just going to roll over uh, yeah, south side. So, of course, that didn't happen. And so uh, we were very disappointed that we lost that game. Uh, we had several guys from that team to go D1. And there's just no way that team should be on the field with us. But, you know, you got to play the game. Yes. You know, you talk about, too, the, the hard work it takes to get to War Memorial. Because you've, you've put that in. You've done it to just even get there for the state championship game. <laughs> Yeah, everyone has, everyone on the team has a role to play. You know, you have your superstars, you have your rah-rah guys, you also have your blue-collar workers, but we have to bring it all together. And getting to that point was, was it, wasn't, it was hard, but at the same time, you had to put in the work. And so we put in the work, and we were blowing teams out, and we felt good about ourselves because uh, we worked hard all year long and off seasons as well. But, you know, at the end of the day, we did not finish the goal, and the ultimate goal was to win the state title. But the main thing is you got there, and it's something you'll never forget. You always remember. I tell these, these young kids that I talk to, once you get to War Memorial, 
win or lose, you'll never forget the experience of East just even getting there. You're absolutely right. Uh, I look back on, on that game. Um, here, actually, a couple of teammates and I was kind of talking about that a few years ago, and Joe T. Robinson, which is where my daughter and son went to school, they won a national, they won the state title uh, last year. So I had the opportunity to actually see them win a state title, but also to experience the ring ceremony. Right. And so <laughs> that was bittersweet, but at the same time, I, you know, now I know how it felt to to be able to win a state title. And real quick, talk about the importance of education. Or you've got a, a, a kid that's in high school and a kid that's in college right now. Talk about to you what education meant through this whole process. Well, you know, my mom was educated uh, in the Little Rock School District for many, many years, and so that was one of the things that she stressed, you know, academics first and sports second. And so that's kind of how I instilled in my kids and myself is that we take care of academics and then sports will come. And so sp academics is very, very important because I tell kids all the time, you cannot play if you don't have the grades. Right. So you got to take care of the first things first is academics and then the sports will come along secondly as well. Well, I will tell you this, that there's not anybody that I ever played with that was more of a first class act both on the field and off the field. And I, I think it's great, James, you come back and you're not only an example to your kids, but to, to others in the community. It's great to have you here today. Appreciate you. Uh, you know, it's great to see a positive impact that a former student athlete can have on their community, even long after graduation. Let's meet another student athlete who is carving his own path from Pulaski Academy. Joe Hyman speaks with our RJ Hall. Thanks, David, and I tell you what, I'm excited to talk to this next Pulaski Academy Bruin who has really burst onto the scene, and a lot of our Kansans have got to know him. His name is Joe Hyman, and Joe, hey, congratulations on the year, and I want to just talk a little bit about you, and uh, you know, you think of the top recruits going into this season, a lot of people didn't say your name, and as the season's gone on, the numbers you put up, over 1,300 yards rushing, over 650 yards receiving, and now colleges all over the country are starting to take recognition of what you've done. Arkansas State, Kansas, Louisville, uh, Memphis, SMU. Just talk about what the, how this season's transpired for you. Uh, this season has been good for me. You know, it was a kind of a statement year. It's not uh, many people thought that I was like one of the top and I just wanted to prove myself. What's it like playing for Coach Kelly? I, I know that he gets a lot of hype on whether it be on TV shows or in the media, uh, but he back, he he really backs up what he preaches and state championships. He, he's got a lot of them. What's it like playing for him? Uh, playing for coach, he, he's my favorite coach. You know, just playing through his system and how he can give me the ball any place at any time is just really good for me. And he's won so many championships, so it makes him one of the top uh, coaches in the country. You know, a lot of people talk about how you guys don't punt, right? And you go for it on fourth down a lot. Not, you probably won't see a lot of that at the college level. Have you had recruiters talk to you about, you know, what it's like to be in that type of, of scheme? No, sir, I have not. No recruiters have, have talked to me about that, but I like the scheme going for it on fourth down all the time. It gives us opportunity to score whenever we have the ball every time, so. It's really hard to defend a team that, you know, most people are going to be done after three downs. They have to go all four downs against you guys. I would imagine it's pretty tough uh, on a lot of defenses when they see you guys. Yes, sir. I think it's tough for most teams against us because we go for it on fourth down, and most of the time we convert it, so it's kind of hard to play against us. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about you as a, as a player in person. What, what are some rituals you, get, you do right before a ball game to get ready for a game? Uh, usually just before the game, I usually just listen to music and really just chill and get in my zone. What's a – you're sitting around the house just kind of thinking about football or doing – what's a dream play for you, whether you take it 100 yards from the one? I mean, what, what is it for you that you think about and go, man, I want to do that? Uh, a dream play with me, I would say is if I get a run, it's 80, 80 yards or longer, you know, just – Making that long run and seeing the crowd go crazy, that's kind of a dream run for me. Who are some of your role models? Uh, I would say my dad is one of, like, my biggest role models. But in sports-wise, I would probably say Saquon Barkley. He's one of the biggest. Okay. You know, I, I think about – you're only a junior, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, so you've got a whole nother year of football that – you know, you've had this list of offers come in this year, but, you know, the, the limit is, on, is pretty much some 
as far as you can see, as far as more more recruiters coming in and seeing the talent that you could do, not in a COVID year, right? Yes, sir. Okay, let's do a little word association. You ready? Okay, when I when I throw out this phrase, you give me one word that describes you. You ready? Yes, sir. What's your favorite TV show? My favorite TV show, I would say, is All American. All American. Okay. What was the last movie you watched? The last movie I watched, um, I I can't I can't even remember the last movie. Nobody I watched. can remember a movie like because it's been so long since we saw a movie. Yes, sir. Okay. What it would be your ideal dream vacation? Ideal dream vacation is going somewhere on a private island with my family and just relaxing on the beach. Okay, so you're you're a standout football player. What's one sport you're not good at? Golfing. Have you have you played a lot of golf? Uh, I've played a couple of times. You're just not into it? Uh, I'm just not very good at it. <laughs> well, good stuff, my man. Well, I, I tell you what. I, I know when you think about Pulaski Academy, you think of state championships. You think about tradition. What's one thing that you want – once you're a senior and you get through this whole high school career, what's one thing that you want to leave to the underclassmen as a legacy that – you know, they when they think of Joe Hyman, they think of this. Uh, I just want to leave as you know, the hardworking guy. Just when people hear my name, they think of oh, he he works very hard and excels in everything he does. Do you know what you want to do? Like when you go to college, what you want to major in, or what you want to do when you get into the real world? Yes, sir. I want to major in kinesiology. Okay. I'm a physical therapist or something like that. Well, that's good stuff. Well, buddy, man, hey. Good luck the rest of the way. I know we'll be watching you throughout your career, and uh, we're looking forward to it. Thanks for the time. Yes, sir. Thank you. David, he's a product of Pulaski Academy. and Looking forward to seeing what this young man does with the rest of his career. Back to you at the Arkansas Sports Hall of Fame. Thanks so much, RJ and Joe. Of course, student athletes are the key to making each season of Arkansas football so special. Before we head back to the game, let's revisit a story about someone who turned heads and broke barriers on the field, Savannah Melton. Well, they were looking for a kicker and they went to the guys' soccer team. Nobody wanted to do it, so my friend joked and said, hey, Savannah, she's played soccer for a while and I'm sure she can. So we just went outside, kicked a few footballs, and the next day he gave me the jersey. Started in the game that Thursday night. I was nervous before kicks, but they knew I could do it, and that's what led to our victories most games because I had a few kicks where it meant win or loss. There was a lot of pressure into the kicks, but having my teammates and the coaches on my back, and Arkansas and North Little Rock especially, they just believed in me. We worked our hardest and fought to get first and set our minds to it, and we did it. And being a part of that team was just incredible and made so much history. Football, there's a lot of aspects to it, not only on the field, but outside in the classroom. Overall, it's given me the experience just to stay on the right path and do my best in everything I do. My experience as being a kicker at North Little Rock High School has led to the opportunity and scholarship at Harding University to play soccer, and I'm just pursuing my athletic career. And I had a wonderful opportunity here just to keep going with athletics and be with a new team and carry the characteristics and everything with me. I would say to young girls who want to follow their dreams, just to believe in themselves and work for it. That's the main part. You know you can do it and you're capable of it, so just pursue it. I look back at all the experiences I've had and I, I'm just grateful for everything. What an incredible story. We wish Savannah all the best in her continued studies at Harding University and thank her for her service in the Air National Guard. Well, that's it for the Halftime Show. Remember that you can keep up with what's happening during the championship games, including in-game stats with the Arkansas PBS Engage app. You can download the app at the App Store and Google Play. I'm David Basil. Let's get you back to the action at War Memorial for the second half of the 5A championship on the home of the high school state finals, Arkansas PBS.
And welcome back to War Memorial Stadium. 43-14, Pulaski Academy leads with Ron Christian. And, uh, you know, I will be checking, checking in with Eric Koyu here in a moment. But, Bobby, uh, what do they got to do to get back in the second half? I mean, they have to – offense has to stay on the field, yeah. first and foremost. They have to get on the field. You've got to get a defensive stop or two. But if PA does get back in the end zone, you've got to recover the onside kick. But if you take away those extra possessions, four extra possessions that PA has gotten, not a completely out of the realm possibility that Christian can get back into this football game. Hayden Balgame, he's over on the Little Rock Christian sideline and about to check in with Eric Koyu now. Take it away. Well, take it away, Hayden. Hey, Coach Koyu, I know rough first half, but able to get that big interception from Platt there right before the break. What would you tell your guys at halftime? Well, biggest thing is we've got to execute on the special teams. I mean, bottom line is you can't lose uh, four onside kicks to uh, Pulaski. They're too good a football team to give up the ball that many times. So we're trying to stay the course. We need to uh, 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 field onside kicks. We need to force some turnovers, uh, try to fight our way back into this game. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, and best of luck in the yep, second half. You. Guys, Coach Eric Koyu trying to get his guys motivated if anybody can do it, he won this ball game two years ago. He's won a state title before, and we'll see if uh, Little Rock Christian can get things going. Thank you, Hayden. And uh, Alaska Academy just made their way onto the field here for the second half action. And, uh, you know, you hear Eric Coe, you, you got to stay the course, you got to do all the right things. But the number one thing, you got to get the onside kick. Yeah, and you've got to get a defensive stop here to start the second half. PA gets the football to start. You got to remember, they started kicking off, recovered the onside kick. So essentially, they're going to get the football to start both halves. But you know, if they give up a touchdown here, mercy rules goes into effect, and the chance of a comeback really goes out the window. So it starts with your defense right here. Well, it was interesting there in the first half uh, as Kevin Kelly was going off the field. He said that he was really going for the mercy rule right. in the first half to really make it easier on his team in the mm -hmm. second half. Didn't get that. And so, you know, that also plays a factor here into the second half is if they get to that 35-point threshold, you know, it, it, you know, Little Rock Christian trying to stay away from that That's here right. in the second half. You're trying to shorten the game. As, as, as fast as they play with the onside kicks, they try to jump out to a big lead so they can shorten the game in the second half. And that's what Pulaski Academy is trying to do. 43 points. Heard from our man Walter Woody, the historian. Ties for a state championship record in the first half. Pretty impressive. Don't know if they're going to get to the 73, which is a state record. But this opening drive is going to be big for both sides because if PA can't put the ball in the end zone, they can essentially put this game away. By the way, I love Walter Woody and everything. He puts, out, he puts out a lot of good stuff. And uh, so either way, we are here at One Memorial Stadium, and it's 43-13. Both teams are making their way back onto the field for Pulaski Academy. We talk so much about what Little Rock Christian's got to do to get back in this one. Pulaski Academy, you don't want to just totally go soft and, and, and not keep playing your offense. What do they got to do? Well, I think this is more of the same. I mean, stick with what we we'll brought you here. The short passing game is working. Today it's been the deep passing game. Maybe look to see Joe Hyman get a few more carries. Didn't have the huge numbers as far as the rushing game. Obviously the big touchdown reception. You know, that also can help shorten the game. Five-yard gain, you can bleed about 40 seconds off the clock. It, they're not going to change. They haven't changed since Coach Kev, Kevin Kelly's been the head coach there. So it's going to be more of the same. You know, it's a workmanlike attitude. If you move the ball down the field, you put the ball in the end zone, you can essentially start your celebration. Uh, and I think really the most impressive thing, and, and I've said this a couple times, you, you'd have Joe Hyman, but you've got two quarterbacks that are playing really well right now. Uh, both uh, quarterbacks have completed 12 passes as Bruffett is 12 of 17, Pfizer's 12 of 16, uh, Bruffett's thrown for 180 yards, Pfizer 175, and both yeah. have uh, thrown two touchdowns. Yeah, they're not making mistakes. So the one interception is really the only one, uh, the only mistake they make. You know, they fumble on the opening play, the interception on the last offensive play. That's the only thing you can point to for this PA squad that you said, okay, this is where you didn't execute perfectly on the offensive side of the football. Well, so as we wind down the Halftime clock. There's still about a minute and 15 seconds left here at halftime, and, and really Pulaski Academy making their way. You talked about Pulaski Academy, Academy getting the ball first here in the second half. Yeah. You think you'll see more of a running game? I know you said bring in Joe Hyman more, yeah. but uh, trying to run that clock because we had almost a two-hour first half. Yeah. You're going to see what they're going to throw at you. Uh, Little Rock Christian was daring PA to throw the football in that first half. They obviously. Chose poorly there. We'll see if they try to stack the box and shut down Joe Hyman more or if they drop more in coverage. They're already dropping eight, so there's not a whole lot more they can do as far as the schematic aspect of it to slow down this PA passing game. They're rushing three, dropping eight. At the end of the day, it's going to be Joe versus Joe. you got to go out there and make some plays. Well, both teams are making their way onto the playing surface as back deep for Pulaski Academy will be Joe Hyman and Caleb Nichols as they stand at the 15-yard line on to kick for Little Rock Christian will be Isaiah Hankins. 
I wouldn't be surprised, Bobby, at this point, if you start seeing Little Rock Christian try to do some onside kicks themselves. You know, I was actually thinking about that as the team was trotting out there. You know, maybe try an onside kick to get, get the football back for your offense, get some momentum going. But as we say that, Pulaski Academy has 10 near the football. So the ball's team at the 40-yard line. We're just about set and ready to go here in the second half of the 5A state championship game. Bobby Swafford, I'm R.J. Honk with Hayden Balgavy on the sidelines for us for this broadcast. And here's the snap. Onside kicks on the way, and it is recovered by Pulaski Academy at the 46-yard line. And they will have it first and 10 from right there. It's almost an unfair advantage for Pulaski Academy for their hands team because they see it every day. Yeah. I mean, every day in practice, they have to go against the craziest onside kick. So those are going to be the most prepared special team unit in the high, uh, state of Arkansas high school football. And uh, they will to get the job done there. It was Luke Witham who came up with the onside kick for Pulaski Academy. And so now they'll have it first and 10 from the 46-yard line. And... Coming out to be the starting quarterback here in the second half for Pulaski Academy will be Nolan Bruffett. Quick pass goes left side, and it's Go off on. to the races. It's Jalen Witcher. He's off to the races. It's a 54-yard touchdown, and that's how they're going to start the first half, or the second half, first play of the second half, with a Jalen Witcher 54-yard touchdown. That's the one thing that Coach Kevin Kelly said wanted right before the half. He gets it on the first play of the second half. And if you're Little Rock Christian, that's the one thing you could not have afforded to do is give up a touchdown there. Now you're down 36 points, and that running clock is going to be inevitable pretty soon. So 54-yard pitch and catch that time, and it's by far the longest play of the ball game for Nolan Bruffett as he now has 234 yards passing and three touchdowns as the PAT is up and good. And with 11.50 to play here in the third quarter, it's 50 to 13. You're, listening, you're watching the Centennial Bank State Football Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by... The Cherokee Nation, our people, our culture, our history, our future. To learn more, go to visitcherokeenation.com and say hello to the Cherokee Nation. You'll find us at the end of a lot of long country roads, covering over 60% of the great state of Arkansas to provide reliable power to over half a million homes, farms, and businesses. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, your local energy partners. John's Honda, your hometown dealer for sales and service of Honda motorcycles, ATVs, Honda generators, and Honda lawnmowers. Family owned and operated since 1967, John's Honda offers factory certified technicians and experienced sales staff. Farmers and Merchants Bank and the Bank of Fayetteville share the mission of Arkansas PBS to enrich and empower all Arkansans. Community, dignity, respect, that's what me banking is all about. More at mebanking.com. It's 50 to 13 here in the 5A state championship game as Pulaski Academy is on to kick. And it's a long onside kick that's going to go out of bounds. I think some would call that a squib kick for as long as it went. But either way, it goes out of bounds. And Little Rock Christian will have the ball with great field position to start their first drive here in the second half. <laughs> Little Rock Christian's got to get something going offensively. I mean, here we are. I mean, you're down by 37 points. Now the clock's running. Just go out there and run your offense. You go out there, you know, hand the football off to your stud running back. Uh, Dyer Jones, he's just a junior. You know, get things rolling for the offense. Get a little confidence for your guys. And maybe some things will about start to bounce your way. Colin Cooper, the quarterback for Little Rock Christian, stands in the shotgun. We'll have a wing back off the right side with Davian Jones or Javian Dyer Jones to his right. Pass goes left side and he's taken down at the 45 yard line. And on the tackle was Jalen McKinney who made the tackle. Corey Platt made the catch. And so that brings up second down for Little Rock Christian. Good to see Platt back out there for the Warriors offense. Took a big shot after his interception there at the end of that first half. Nice to see him back on the field. Second and four. Ball at the 46. Here's a big pass play. 
Going big ball and it overthrows his intended target, Platt. And that'll bring up third down for Little Rock Christian. Still the double coverage on Little Rock Christian's biggest target in the passing game coming into this contest. When you look at the receptions uh, across the board, 41 for Platt, the next closest player on the roster, had 16. So you know that Little Rock Christian is going to try to get him the football in the passing game as much as they can, and PA is trying to take that away. Third down and four. Colin Cooper, the quarterback for Little Rock Christian. Takes the snap, works it right side, and the defense for Pulaski Academy is right there. Is that Joe Hyman who made the tackle? I believe, no, it was actually Cameron Mercer who came up to make the tackle just short of the first down marker. It's going to bring up fourth down and one, but great defense that time by Pulaski Academy as they were able to keep him from getting the first down. It's good, great play recognition by Mercer to get out there as soon as he caught the football, get him out of bounds short of the sticks. Here's Colin Cooper going for it on fourth down. They give it off to uh, Dyer Jones, and boy, it's going to be close, Bobby. Yep. I, I mean, it's either going to be right there as Liam Dick came in and was able to knock him back. It's going to depend on the spot. Boy, that is awfully close. Yeah, the old eagle eye from here is not going to be able to tell. I think we're going to have to bring out the chains, but he very well could be short. I think they're going to. Yep, they're not going to get. They're going to measure. They're going to say it's Pulaski Academy football. It's a big stop for the PA defense. It's easy to kind of relax yourself. You've got a big lead. The clock's already running, but now the Bruin defense gets a big stop, and that's why we've seen so many mercy rules for PA this year. Yeah. We talked about their offense at the top of the broadcast, but this defense probably doesn't get enough recognition. I think Coach Co used that when he's wanting to know why they didn't bring the chains out to at least look at it. Yeah. On fourth down, he was asking questions, but either way. Pulaski Academy is going to have the football at the 49-yard line in Little Rock Christian territory. I hand it off. Hyman. And he gets wrestled down back behind the line of scrimmage at the Pulaski Academy 49-yard line. It was Anthony Pugh who was able to do that. And so that will bring up second down and 12. Nice job by Pugh. He's been their playmaker all season as far as tackles for a loss. Came into the contest with 14. Going to add another to his total there. Here's a pass. Goes right side. That time it was Caleb Nichols who was able to get the reception and take it down close to the first down marker. Jeff Smith was able to take him down for tackle. And that will bring up third down. Excuse me, that was Preston Davis. You know, there's going to a lot, be a lot of people watching this contest and say, why are you throwing the football with the score? I mean, there's still eight and a half minutes left in the third quarter. You've got to run your offense. There's too much time in this contest to really get out of your norm. Iman's run the Wildcat. Now hand, hands it off over to Bruffett, who tries to hook up with Nichols, and it hit right off his chest plate, and that brings up fourth down. That's a perfect throw on the run there by the quarterback. It hits his receiver right in the chest. Worst place you can hit a receiver. Right between the numbers, this bounces off, and now the fourth down coming up. 8.06 and counting left here in the third quarter. We've got a running clock because of the sportsmanship rule as it's 50-13, to 13, Pulaski Academy. Nolan Bruff at the quarterback for Pulaski Academy. He looks over to get the call from Kevin Kelly. Rough and looking to throw, going big ball. Down the middle, has a man all the way inside the 15-yard line. One thing you have to give a lot of credit to for this PA passing game, they loft the ball out there. They, they, they kind of loft it out there, allow the receivers to run underneath it. They'd be right there for another big game. It was Cooper White who was able to come up with the reception. It was a 28-yard pitch and catch. Well, it's another first down for, for, for Pulaski Academy. And I hand it off inside to Hyman. Hyman going to run, and he walks into the end zone. It's a 14-yard touchdown. Great job on the offensive line, the old Statue of Liberty play there. Saw that against Boise State against Oklahoma. Quarterback act like he's going to throw it, kind of the fake handoff there. And it's a, a nice walk-in touchdown there for Joe Hyman, who's back in the end zone again. So it's 56 to 13. As on to kick the PAT for the Bruins is going to be Vaughn Selick. 
gotten a little more work on the PAT unit today than most expected. Yeah. Early, too. Kick is up, and it is good. And it's 57 to 13 with 6.54 to play here in the third quarter of the 5A State Championship game. Let's head back down to Hayden Baumgaming, who's on the sideline. He's on the PA sideline. Hayden. RJ, you mentioned it right there. Right before that drive, Kevin Kelly went over to his offensive line and he said, we are leaning on you guys. We're going to end this ball game through you guys. And that is exactly what this Pulaski Academy offense is doing. And Bobby, you alluded to it. They're not just going to run the ball and run the ball and run the ball. They're going to move it around. They're going to throw it because that's exactly what Pulaski Academy does. Again, they go up now 57 to 13. And he said it right before the half. He wanted to hit that sportsmanship uh, rule because no one's ever come back for that. And it keeps the clock moving. Clips the, you know, honestly, this PA offense going and going and going, and they're just doing exactly what they wanted to do when they came into this ball game today. Thank you, Hayden. As Pulaski Academy brings their kick team on, kick off to Little Rock Christian, and it looks like Bobby, like they may be lining up to kick it deep. Is that possible? Is that legal? <laughs> it's kickoff, and sure enough, gonna kick it off and. For Little Rock Christian is Luke Lee, Luke Lee on the who took it all the way out to the 25-yard line, and that's where Little Rock Christian will have it first and ten. If you don't watch Arkansas high school football a lot, you may be wondering, okay, what is the sportsmanship? What are the specifics of it? Any point in the second half, if a team is trailing by 35 points or more, the down. clock doesn't stop. And so it's going to continue. The only time it's going to stop is with a score or a change of possession. Other, other than that, incomplete pass, go, guy goes out of bounds or a first down, the clock's going to continue to run. So Colin Cooper in the shotgun throws it right side as his wide receiver. And that time it was Eli Cooper who made the reception. It was up second down for the Warriors. You can experience all the action all over again next week. All you have to do is go to Arkansas PBS Sports YouTube. That is youtube.com slash Arkansas PBS. The 7A and 6A state championship games are already up on YouTube. So here's Dyer Jones. Goes left side and brings up a third down and one now for Little Rock Christian. Third down and one, 525 and counting. Gives it off to Dyer Jones again. Going to pick up the first down, about two yards more. Bring up another first down for Little Rock Christian. It's kind of more of the same here for Little Rock Christian. Just kind of grind out your offense, get things churning with that run game. and. See if you can hit a big play with some play action. Here's Colin Cooper. Gives it off to Dyer Jones. Works it back up the middle, and he's going to pick up about Jay four Dyer yards Jones on the play. It was, it was Liam Dick who came in to make the stop. They've got to give a lot of credit to this PA defense as well. They haven't given up many big plays. Oh. The one touchdown run, I believe, it was 27 yards from for Dyer Jones in that first half. Might be the biggest play they've allowed tonight. Think about this. Little Rock Christian who was averaging 50 points in the playoffs, 50.6 points. They've been held to 13 so far today. Here's a pass play. Across the middle. Has a man. It's like clockwork. So they haven't given up a big play, and all of a sudden, big play right down the seam. Perfect pass from Kyle Cooper. It was Walker White who was able to make the reception takes it all the way down the 29 yard line before Josiah Johnson takes him down really stepped into it and hits his receiver in stride really nice pass there first and 10 under four to play Alan Cooper makes a snap gives it off over to Dyer Jones and he falls down falls down right at the line of scrimmage He's, bring up second down. He may not get credit for the tackle, but Fuda Shinkawa got in there and blew up the offensive line for Little Rock Christian, pushed him into the backfield, kind of got the feet tangled up with the lineman and the running back. Nice play by the linebacker. Second and 10. As Cooper going to roll to his right. Gonna throw it deep downfield, and it's caught 
It's caught for a touchdown. Eli Cooper from 29 yards out for the touchdown. He's got a 50-50 ball. Pulaski Academy had a couple defenders had a chance at it, but just out of their reach. And right to the hands of his receiver and Little Rock Christian back in the end zone. Well, I almost thought that was going to be intercepted, Bobby. Watch this right here. I mean, you got two defenders that jump right up over the top of Eli Cooper, and he just was able to get the ball over his hands for the touchdown. Yeah, Dylan Allison and Jalen McKinney both had a chance to make the play there. Neither could get their hands on it. Little Rock Christian's got a pulling spot. So 3.16 to play here in the third quarter. It's 57 to 20. Pulaski Academy on top of Little Rock Christian Academy in the 5A state championship game. And really, I, we talked about it. That's exactly the, the potion that Little Rock Christian needed. I, I mean, not going to say that they're going to get back in this thing, but they, they needed something to give them a little bit of momentum throughout the rest of this ball game. Yeah, they had a couple big plays on that drive, and that's something they really haven't done for the majority of this contest. You take out the 27-yard run for Dyer Jones in the first half. They haven't had any explosive plays. So back-to-back -back big plays there in the passing game. That's what you like to see. The kids aren't going to give up. Well, they know this is going to be their last football game for some of them that they ever play for the others until next fall rolls around. So they're going to go out there and give their all. Nice job by Little Rock Christian to get back in the end zone. So back deep to receive the kick for Pulaski Academy is going to be Joe Hyman. And I would imagine you're probably going to have another onside kick, but they put Hyman back at the 20-yard line just for safe measures. Yeah, they're lined up to kick it short. Here's the onside kick, and it's picked up and went out of bounds, I believe, taking the... Onside kick for Pulaski Academy was Kenneth Jordan. No, oh, excuse me, that was actually Walt Smiley. Lucky he just stepped out of bounds. He might have had a chance to to take that one back for some big damage. Yeah. That's that's what's kind of the, the the interesting part of an onside kick. If you can get it on a good hop, you can catch it on the run and you go. You be gone. Didn't Cowboys do that a couple weeks ago? <laughs> Yeah, uh, they, yeah. I, there's not many bright spots with the Cowboys <laughs> this year, so yeah, you think I would remember those. Yeah, and there's not many. You're correct. Uh, here's Pfizer. Pfizer going to keep it himself and pick up a couple yards on the play. It was Anthony Pugh who was there to make the tackle for Little Rock Christian. Pugh's had a nice game. It's not going to show up and some of the nitty-gritty plays, but he's done a really nice job of, of containing the edge. That time he tracks down the quarterback from behind. Maybe your defensive MVP so far today for, for Christian. Second down and eight as the ball's at the 46 yard line. There's Pfizer gonna hand it off to Hyman. Works it back outside with a nice plant and he's able to get it inside the 40 yard line close to the first down. Boy, Bobby, you saw right there where he stuck that left foot in the ground and Bounced it back outside. That's the talent that uh, Joe Hyman's got. He's so quick. I mean, we're going to see the replay here. You look like you've got him bottled up in the hole. And as you mentioned, he puts the foot in the ground, able to bounce off, pick up the extra yardage, get a first down. Just a junior, too. That's what's scary. The, the, I know the offers aren't there as far as the, the big-time Division One offers. He's got an offer to play at Memphis. I think they're going to come. You, I mean, you don't put up 3,000 yards of offense and not get the recognition of the college coaches. Minute 15 to play now. Harley Pfizer with Hyman to his left. Hand it off. Hyman's going to go straight up and got hit immediately that time by Joe Slate Hyman Wilkerson. Perry. Well, the question a lot Slate of times Wilkerson. about Hyman's going to be the durability. Can someone who's five foot nine, 170 pounds, keep take that kind of beating? Well, if you look at the touches this year, well, well over 200 and. 50 touches this season as a running back and a receiver. So I think he's the durability is not the issue there. It's just going to be the opportunity to play at that division one level. Second and nine. Inside. Don't play that over to Allison. Allison just kind of picking his spot. Still on his feet. We got a penalty flag down as he goes out of bounds. Out there might be a hold out around the 25 yard line. Landon Nelson knocked him out of bounds. Does a great job by Allison to wait for his blockers yeah. to set that one up. And maybe one of those big linemen got the hands on the outside of the shoulders of the defensive back and may negate some of this big play. It's a 22 yard pass and catch. 
And we'll get the call. Blocking back on the offense. Ten yard penalty. Well, the block in the back that is going to come back from the. It's going to result from, in about a one yard gain. Yeah, it was better from the 25 yard line. So they're going to spot the ball back at the 35 yard line. So you're right, Bobby. It's a one yard gain on the play to bring up second down and seven. Yeah, there's a receiver from you're right behind the play. And they hit a player in the back. Can't do that. As PA is lined up in the, the wide splits. And here's a pass to Witcher over the left side, and Witcher was knocked out by Jackson Smith. And that's going to do it for the third quarter of play. Pulaski Academy can hold up the four fingers because they're on their way to a state championship as they lead it 57 to 20. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Football Championships in Arkansas PBS Sports. Roger Scott for Big Red Stores. Big Red Stores is proud to support high school athletics and to sponsor these high school championship games. Over 40 Big Red Stores are located throughout Central Arkansas, each one staffed with our team members who have participated in games, marched in the band, or led the spirit teams in cheers. And now we are pleased to bring families, schools, and communities together. Big Red Stores, now more convenient than ever. Enjoy the games. I'm Rick Steves. You know, I don't go anywhere without my passport. Thanks to PBS Passport, you can watch all my travel specials. This exclusive streaming service is just for our members. Not only can you see all my shows, but you can see thousands of hours of your favorite public television shows. Become a member today. We start the fourth quarter here at War Memorial Stadium. 5A State Championship game as Pulaski Academy leads it. Here's a direct snap. That is going to take him, be taken by their big man. Zarius Woods on the that was uh, Zarius, Zarius Woods. Woods who was able to take it. The linebacker normally 6'1", 235 pounds. That uh, took it all the way down to about a half yard away from the first down stick. And that'll bring up a third or fourth down. I believe Woods was the one who recovered the onside kick and wisely stepped out of bounds. Might, you know, as a big guy myself, I'd like to see that guy rumble a little bit. And it looks like they may be bringing the chains on all the way from that far side of the field. And uh, they're going to they're gonna get that. Yeah, they're going to bring the chains on. And Coach Cody is like, where was that earlier when I wanted it? Yep. And so the clock's going to stop there for the, for the measurement. What's the old eagle I tell you, RJ? To get it? I think they're short. Okay. But... That's just it's an educated guess. Stretched out. Oh, the eagle eye's working. Yeah. Well, they call me Hawkeye for a reason. It's because your last name's Hawk. Oh, that's that's it. <laughs> and, you, and you happen to have eyes. <laughs> oh, I can so. See, I can see right through you. Fourth down now for, for Pulaski Academy. Let's head down to Hayden Balgavy on the sideline. Guys, you were talking about Joe Hyman just a little bit earlier. I know you could see it on the screen about how well he runs. This guy, when you're down here on the sideline, you can feel the way he runs. He just doesn't run out of energy. It's taken two, three, four Warriors just to get him down. Would not surprise me at all one bit if he sees the ball right here on fourth down. But, I, Bobby, I think those Division One offers are going to come, as you mentioned, the durability. Down here, he looks like they just started the ball game. I mean, he's running hard. Thank you, Hayden. Appreciate it. Fourth down for Pulaski Academy. Some beef back there in the backfield with Joe Hyman as well. I'll take it. And Joe Hyman took it directly. And they get the first down easily and then walk out of bounds. And now we've got a penalty flag. It was Luke Lee who pushed him out of bounds. 
So they load up the backfield, direct snap to the running back and just have two lead blocker. Doesn't hurt when one's a linebacker and one's a safety. Oh. Get out there and just get a hat on a hat, get a first down. But now we've got to check and see what the flag's about. Clock should be running, but it's not. Personal foul, face mask on the defense. So it's going to be a 15 yarder all the way down to the 11. And with yep. 11, 10 yeah. and counting, I mean, Pulaski Academy is just trying to, I mean, they, they don't even have their, their normal quarterback back there. They, they're just trying to, got three running backs in the backfield to try to take a snap. Here's a fake to Hyman and carrying the football for Pulaski Academy is Josiah Johnson. Yeah, he's the big time safety. <laughs> you talk about some numbers. 162 tackles coming into today. Egan McCarver knocked him out of bounds that time. That brings up second down and five. They can still get a first down by getting to the one yard line. Trying some different things, maybe try to get their senior leader on the defensive side in the end zone. Ock rolls with 10 20 to play fourth quarter. So Hyman's going to run that Wildcat. Now we've got a penalty flag by the back judge. Looks like the play clock went to zero. Play of game on the offense. Five yard penalty. And so that'll back him up five yards. Back to second and ten. Yeah, I keep at the coach up a play clock guy. He's not you're not used to seeing the mercy rule in the state championship game. The clock does continue to stop even though it's not supposed to. So here's the inside pitch to Allison. Allison down to the four yard line before getting knocked out of bounds by Anthony Pugh. Anthony Pugh, next to stop. So that'll bring up third down now for Pulaski Academy. It's like a time they've run that. They do it. You gotta give a lot of credit to the PA lineman. Nice job to get out in space by big number 70 with the pancake block. I hadn't talked about those guys enough, but Trace Hawkins, 6'3, 290 pound senior, big number 70 for Pulaski Academy. I know that people watching back home oftentimes get tired of seeing these two teams in the state championship game but it says something though Bobby that we'll talk about it here in just a minute but here's a big run for the big man he goes into the end zone it was Isarius Woods he's able to take it in for four yards out for the touchdown that's just beef right there you got to want to tackle him when number 30 gets the ball in his hands and at the end of a drive that's almost not fair when you've got someone that size and that speed coming at you. But no, I was saying that Pulaski Academy since 2003 has won eight state championships. And you know, I, I know there's, you get tired of seeing the same teams in the state finals, but they're doing something right over at Pulaski Academy as the extra point is up and good to make it 64 to 20. And we're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have the rest of this ball game as you're watching the Centennial Bank State Football Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. first car to your first home to your first child and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring for everything that matters most to you and your family there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love your local farm bureau insurance agent farm bureau insurance real service real people 
Memorial Stadium, 64 to 30. Or excuse me, 64-20. I, I read that wrong. I was looking at something else. But 64-20 as the kick is going to go in the air and out of bounds. And so Little Rock Christian will get great field position to start this drive. Nine minutes to play here in the fourth quarter. That last touchdown, RJ Pulaski Academy is now tied for second most points scored in a state championship game in Arkansas history. The last time a team scored 64 points was Pulaski Academy, 2003 when they played Rivercrest. Okay, and you said the record was what? The record is from 1949, the Stuttgart Ricebird scored 73 against the Queen. That game was 73 to 18. 1949 was a long time ago. They got tell nine me. minutes left as here's Dyer Jones who takes it up to 45. Don't miss the Arkansas PBS original film Urban Forge, Ozark Artistry. A behind the scenes look at Urban Forge, a blacksmithing shop in Mountain View. Watch today at youtube.com slash Arkansas PBS. Second down and six as Colin Cooper get the football brings a man in motion that is Walker White and they hand it off to Jones our Jones is going to take it all the way inside Pulaski Academy territory I said it was Dyer Jones that was actually Brian Gittens as Bo Miller made the tackle and so with 806 to play in fourth quarter 64 20 Three wide to that left side as Colin Cooper looks to throw, has a man that's over to White, and White's going to pick up about six Colin yards Cooper's on the, or excuse me, about, you know, about six yards on the play. And so that brings up second down as making the tackle was Joseph Osment that time. Osment and you look at the numbers, Little Rock Christian, 262 yards of offense. They're plus two in the turnover margin. Here's a nice run by Gittens as Gittens picks up the first down, takes the ball to the 35-yard line. Normally a game you would take those kind of numbers, but obviously Pulaski Academy is a completely different style. Talking to one athletic director this week, so it's just not, it's not the normal football you see. You've got to do things completely differently when you play PA. First and 10. Here's a snap, going to fake the handoff. Go big ball. Left side has a man, but overthrew him. As that time tried to hook up with Eli Cooper. And so that'll bring up second down for Little Rock Christian. Had yeah, a simple go right up the sideline. Cooper had a couple steps on the PA defender, just overshot his man. Not able to connect for the score. Second down. So brings up second and 10. All at the 35 yard line. Here's a handoff to Gittens. Gittens gets it to the 35-yard line. That's all he gets to. They're, I think they're going to give him a half a yard on the play as Joseph Osment was there to take him down. Well, this has been the down all day, RJ, that Little Rock Christian has struggled on third down offensively and defensively. Staying on the field and getting off the field has been the issue for the Warriors. Get that video I sent you. Takes the handoff, works to the left side, and... Just overthrown the outstretched arms of his wide receiver that time, Benjamin Kelly. So it brings up fourth and ten. Yeah, just a little more of the same there. Receiver was open. Maybe had a chance to run for extra yardage and get a first down if they were able to connect. But the throw was wide. And now the Warriors are faced with the fourth down. 5.45 to play here in the ball game. Snaps back, and Cooper going to step up in the pocket. Now throw deep. Got a man, but he overthrows him. He was trying to hook up with Walker White. And it's going to be a turnover on downs. And now Bobby Pulaski Academy can pretty much just run this clock out now. Yep. 0 for 3 on fourth down today for Little Rock Christian. And, and that play right there kind of sums it up. Had a receiver open behind the defense, just could not connect, could not make those big plays today when they needed it most. And obviously, the wind's starting to whip that direction. I don't know if you can see the top of the flags on the uprights, but still not sure that the wind had a, a lot to do with that one, but still the incomplete pass, turnover on downs. Let's head down to Hayden Balgavy on the sidelines. 
talk so much about this PA offense, and rightfully so, putting up 64 points, but you've got to think Kevin Kelly has got to be so proud of this Bruins defense. Little Rock Christian's offense, RJ, I think you mentioned it, what, 50 points a game so far in the playoffs. Corey Platt had six touchdowns last week against Harrison, but Fukushawa, a linebacker, has been so good for these Bruins and really a dominant, really impressive performance for this Bruin defense, who is always going to be overshadowed by Kevin Kelly in the offense. Thanks, Hayden. Yeah, no, I mean... This is a, a team that in Pulaski Academy who was averaging 52 points in the playoffs. But get this, Bobby. They, I mean, they were they were giving up in the playoffs 21 points a game. Yep. And they've given up 20 today. Here's another handoff. Nice job by Coach Kevin Kelly there. Brings up the entire starting offense. Got the backups in there, get a little experience. And you mentioned it before the game. If you're a junior and senior, you're going to get to play. Maybe some of those sophomores may get a little game action as well. Well, it brings up third down for Pulaski Academy as that last run was by Sam Ryans. Tackle was made by Tommy Wadsworth. Here's the snap, gonna hand it off, looks to throw. Looks to throw, throws it out of bounds. And making the throw that time for Pulaski Academy was Kel Busby. A late, late flag comes in there. It could be an illegal lineman downfield as late as that flag came in. Kevin Kelly trying to get some work out of a future quarterback, and Kel Busby uh, stands as a freshman, 6'1, 175. Probably the biggest quarterback he's had in a while. Down to the receiver, downfield, on the offense, five yard penalty. Kind of talking to some some coaches and some teams that have played these two squads, you know, through the different levels. They both say they both have an outstanding freshman quarterback coming up. So we've seen these two teams score off in the championship game here at the five A level the last three years, including this year. It may not end. So the five A coaches don't want to hear that. Um, here it is, Pulaski Academy, and what quarterback now is Davis. Also, dead ball, false start on the offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat third down. Just a sophomore. There's 18 there. Also, uh, sophomore, 5'10, 145. Yes. That's one thing Pulaski Academy is never going to be short on as quarterbacks. Yeah. They've always got the next one up. Take the snap now, roll to his right. Goes downfield, almost intercepted that time as on the coverage for Little Rock Christian was Ben Ridings. David Halsell's pass is incomplete. I believe the intended target that time was Tyson Carroll for, or Mick Carroll, excuse me, for Pulaski Academy. Bring it up fourth down. Again, PA hasn't punted today. I'm not sure they've punted all season. I don't think they've punted all season. And they may not have punted in the last decade. Fourth and 15. Alaska Academy's five for five on fourth down today. Take the snap and I have a receiver overthrew him and it's going to go out of bounds. It'll be a turnover on downs for Pulaski Academy. And so with 240 left here in the fourth quarter, bring on the offense for Little Rock Christian. You know, it's, it may not look the prettiest, but how valuable is this experience going to be for these young freshmen and sophomores getting out to play in the state championship game? So if PA is lucky enough to make another run next year, the year after these guys if, or maybe not be completely awestruck by the, the stage of playing in a state championship. That's back. They're going to hand it off. That is Brian Gittens running the ball for Little Rock Christian. He's going to close to a first down. May have gotten a yard across the first down marker. And they, he does. So they'll bring up first down and 10 for Little Rock Christian. Looks to throw. Goes left side. Almost intercepted as it went in and out of the hands of the intended target. Uh, Josh Cady was on the coverage that time. But I believe for Little Rock Christian, his intended target at wide receiver was Benjamin Kelly. Katie had the end zone in his sights there. If he's able to corral that deflection, he'd have been off to the races. 
after two to play. There's a pass and it was in and out of the hands of his intended target, Walker White. Passes a little behind his intended target. And we've seen that a couple times today from Cooper, just not quite on the same page with his receivers. That one's behind, of course, is a third down. Cooper handed off to get Giddens. Giddens gets out past the 10 yard line. I'll say his knee was down right at the 10, and so he's going to be about two yards shy of the first down as Hunt Harrison was in there to make the tackle for Pulaski Academy. It's fourth down for Little Rock Christian. Hand it off again, straight up the middle, got the first down. And we're now under a minute to play here in the 5A state championship game as Preston Spann made that last tackle. Uh, Coach Kevin Kelly, you know, you've been here before. Time to get the head on the swivel and look for that Gatorade bucket. I think they already got it. Because they? Um, there was a whole bunch of people celebrating, but I want to check. Now here's a pass across the middle, touchdown. Touchdown Little Rock Christian as it was Isaiah Hankins who took it in for the touchdown for Little Rock Christian. All little post route that was able to go into to the end zone, and so it's a touchdown for Little Rock Christian and Isaiah Hankins as they'll come on for the PAT. As it kicks up and good, and it's 64-27 with 37 seconds to play here in the fourth quarter of the 5A state championship game. Nice job by Little Rock Christian there just to keep keep grinding, keep keep the offense out there, get some more points on the board. Uh, we knew that these kids weren't going to give up, but you got to tip your caps to the Navy and Columbia Blue out there. The third different team in Arkansas are going to cap off a perfect season. At Bryant at 7A, Greenwood at 6A, and now PA at 5A, all going to go undefeated in what was a very, very odd year for high school athletics. You're right. And, you know, I, I did an interview with Kevin Kelly and with Eric Cody at the beginning of the year, and I, I asked Coach Kelly, I said, you stood out on a, on a practice field for an exhibition game with Bryant to start the year. You and Buck James stood in the middle of the field and said how uh, they needed everybody's help to get through this season. How's how gratifying is it for you to be able to say, you know, you started that mission, now you're here. And, and he even said, he goes, you know, it's, it, to say it was easy, that would be an understatement. And he said, this whole season, there's been nothing easy about this entire season. Yeah, it's not just the coaches, it's not just the players, it's the athletic programs, it's the schools, it's the parents. It took everybody involved to get this season not only started, but finished. And you got to give a tip of the cap to everybody across Arkansas because how many times did we see a game get canceled on a Tuesday or a Wednesday and those teams were still able to go out and find an opponent to play on Friday night. Pulaski Academy played a school from Texas. I was Texas. You know, the drop of a hat. Uh, they played a school for, uh, you know, the, the 7A schools played a couple different times. You know, the you know Joe T. Robinson, Ravenwood, Tennessee, Life Christian out of Virginia, Tyler Legacy. I mean, PA says if you show up, we'll play you. And all, all the schools in Arkansas were kind of the same way. So you gotta give a lot of credit to programs across the state just to get this season in because it's important for those guys out there on the field. 37 seconds left here in the 5A state title game. They're gonna take the snap, hand it off, and be tackled right there, I believe. Running the football that time for Pulaski Academy was Sam Ryans. On the tackle was Julian Walker. Thirteen seconds to play. Takes a handoff, throws it out of bounds, and Coach Kelly just got the Gatorade bath as the clock expired. And Pulaski Academy for the ninth time since 2003. Our state champions. It's impressive what they've been able to do as a program, RJ. You mentioned it, but I mean, just this last decade, championships in 2011, 14, 15, 16, 17, took the break in 18 when Little Rock Christian beat them 
But now back to back for Pulaski Academy and they're right there at the top as far as programs in Arkansas. As far as winning state championships, you've got to put them in the class with the Greenwoods, the Bentonvilles, and obviously now the Bryants is the, the cream of the crop in Arkansas, but pretty, pretty impressive stuff what Pulaski Academy and Coach Kevin Kelly have been able to build at Class 5A. And I think, honestly, you, you mentioned all those schools, but really, you got to start thinking about the Bartons. Yep. I, I mean, those, those type of schools, the Little Rock Centrals back in the day that uh, were on runs, that's... You always think about uh, when any time there's a dynasty of any sorts, that's what uh, was going on. So uh, you, you, obviously you got to throw Pine Bluff in there, what yeah. they were able to do in the 90s. You mentioned Little Rock Central. They've got a, a ton of championships. Fort Smith Southside's got a handful. I mean, so there's a lot of schools. I mean, you can go to the, the small school level, the, the Charlestons of the world, who've got four and five state championships. There's a lot the of really, really good programs. But what PA's been, been able to do the last 15, 20 years is, is outstanding. Okay, well, we owe you a break. When we come back, we will have head coach Kevin. Kevin Kelly with Hunter Balgavy as Pulaski Academy is your 5A state champion as they win at 64-27. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Football Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. You fill up my One of the most popular singers in America, John Denver. Explore the man behind the music. What Frank Sinatra was to the 40s, Elvis Presley was to the 50s, and the Beatles were to the 60s, John Denver was to the 70s. John Denver, Country Boy. Tonight at 9.30. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by... The Cherokee Nation. Our people. Our culture. Our history. Our future. To learn more, go to visitcherokeenation.com and say hello to the Cherokee Nation. You'll find us at the end of a lot of long country roads, covering over 60% of the great state of Arkansas to provide reliable power to over half a million homes, farms, and businesses. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, your local energy partners. John's Honda, your hometown dealer for sales and service of Honda motorcycles, ATVs, Honda generators, and Honda lawnmowers. Family owned and operated since 1967, John's Honda offers factory certified technicians and experienced sales staff. Farmers and Merchants Bank and the Bank of Fayetteville share the mission of Arkansas PBS to enrich and empower all Arkansans. Community, dignity, respect, that's what me banking is all about. More at mebanking.com. Here we go, the energy. And they're giving out MVP awards and, and overall trophies right now here at War Memorial Stadium as the Pulaski Academy Bruins, they win the 5A state title 64 to 27 over Little Rock Christian Academy. RJ Hawk with Bobby Swafford. And Hayden Baumgaby on the sidelines. Hayden will be catching up with head coach Kevin Kelly momentarily. And Bobby, uh, you know, we talked about how good Pulaski Academy's been since really since 2003. But what impressed you the most out of this team today? I think the, the way to adapt. We knew that Joe Hyman was going to be able to, to run the football. The, the fact that they were able to, they were content with throwing the football, that's what Little Rock Christian was, was really forcing the hand. They said, you know what, if that's what you want to give us, they didn't come out and make mistakes. Grant, they lost the turnover battle. They were able just to keep that constant pressure and maybe not enough credit for the, the kicker. I mean, you full perfect onside kicks and executed uh, <laughs> even better. So Joe Hyman has been named the most outstanding player for Pulaski Academy. And Bobby, I, I have to agree. You and I were talking in the break on who we'd give it to. And, uh, you know, Joe Hyman on the day, 203 total yards of offense. He had uh, 74 yards rushing and he had 129 yards receiving with four touchdowns combined. I mean, and. Pick of a performance. Yeah, you could almost say that was a season accolade as well. 2,000 yards rushing, 1,000 yards receiving, well over 30 touchdowns. A lot of times the, the room to our right, the, the main media room, they like to vote for quarterbacks. Yeah. They got it right today. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. And uh, I, I tell you what, uh, he, he did a heck of a job. And I know Hayden Bow gave you right now is uh, waiting on coach. And as soon as he gets 
gets coached, we will definitely go down and talk to Coach Kelly about this state championship win as they win it 64 to 27. And, you know, you think about, uh, we, you talked about the non-conference wins that Pulaski Academy did this year, and they do it every year where they go to Tennessee and Virginia and all these, but the teams that they played, the Ravenwood Tennessee, who's always nationally ranked, the Live Christian Virginia team that is always nationally ranked, Tyler Legacy, who has six guys going to play FBS football on that football team that they beat 50 to 25. That's what's impressive is that they go and play those non-conference games to show that, hey, look, we're really not, you know, it's not just Arkansas high school football. We're They're carrying that Arkansas flag. Yeah, there's not many times that Kevin Kelly or Pulaski Academy is going to say no. If, if you call them, they're likely going to play you. I mean, it's one of those things where they've been able to build this program, and they're such a different animal when you try to line up and play against them. I mean, the Bruins have been able to just go out and, and do anything and everything they want to do offensively, special teams-wise, and they, they just want to outman you. They say, okay, we're going to get more possessions than you. We're going to put the, the ball in the end zone as we're still trying to get Coach Kevin Kelly. It's, it's kind of like herding cats out there, but hard to break up a championship celebration. But, I mean, when you think about it, though, R.J., what they did, what we watched, wasn't anything – crazy wasn't anything you know trick play after trick play it was essentially man versus man and Pulaski Academy won that battle more times than not you're exactly right and, and it looks like Pulaski Academy is taking a picture right now over uh, in the end zone and I know it looks like uh, Hayden Balgave is working on getting coached right now he hadn't made it quite over <laughs> they, they, they pulled him away and then he then he ran back to go get another picture so we're gonna we're gonna wait just for a moment as you can see right there uh, the entire team, cheerleading squad, everybody getting their picture taken for this 5A state championship in 2020. This one will mean a lot for Coach Kevin Kelly after the type of year that we've had. But uh, uh, I, I know that the, for anybody, just the fact that we made it this far in the yeah. football season, there, there's a lot of people that said we'd never make it this far. Yeah, perfect seasons are rare. And it doesn't matter if you play every game. You know, the, I know Pulaski Academy lost a game because of COVID. I mean, th by losing a game, I mean they didn't get to play it. So, But they, every time they lined up, they, they were able to get a victory. And, you know, perfect seasons are rare. It doesn't happen in every classification every year. So the fact that they were able to, to cap this one off and in this style, pretty impressive. Obviously, got to tip the cap. So they're wrapping things up right now after the, the picture take, and we're just waiting on Coach. You know, we're, it's always on Coach Kelly's time whenever yeah. you want to get an interview. And so we're just waiting on him to, to come on over and have a conversation with us. There he comes. So Hayden Bowden gave his getting coach over, and Hayden, take it away. Coach, so good to see you. Congratulations. Six titles in seven years. Where does this one rack up? I mean, it ranks up at the top. You know, the, the last one feels like the best. But, you know, they're all been neat. What's been great is the personality of each team has been different. This one was way different because we didn't get the summer, so our defense had to step up early. And they did that game after game. And when people COVID it out, we've, we put in harder teams, thinking it would help us at the end. It did just that. But our defense was lights out the whole year. And, you know, and Coach Thrash and Coach White and Coach Taylor got the guys ready and then you just kept seeing guys on defense make plays and to be small like that and stand up and keep making plays till our offense got on track was fantastic so really proud of them it was that kind of year but this was as team efforted of a state championship as we had i got to talk to earlier this week you said i would not trade joe hyman for anybody in the world i'm sure that still holds true today yeah and it's not just on the field i mean you've got to be the i mean for me to make that statement he is so awesome off the field. He just works, never asks for anything. I have to say, Joe, what do you see out there that we can get you the ball some more? He never asks for anything. He just wants to play and, and, and go hard. His teammates love him. He encourages them. It's never about him. And you get out on the field, and he's just doing that. So he's just electric to watch because he never, never slows down and paces himself, even when he knows he's just running a guy off so somebody else can catch a ball or whatever. It's, it's, it's awesome, and he's an awesome kid as well as a football player. You guys were able to get four onside kicks in the first half, difference in the ball game, the way to go. Yeah, man, I mean, you know, they'll probably change some rules after that. They seem to change rules. We have a good year of that. But Vaughn uh, Selick is our kicker, and he did a great job this year. And, and, and it's been spotty, but, man, when we needed him on the biggest stage, he did it just that. It was awesome. And, you know, we're undefeated when we're net two. Well, we've lost one game when we're net two onside kicks. You get net four, and you're going to win all your games. Another title for Pulaski Academy. Coach, thank you so much again. Really, really appreciate it. Really proud of our team and our coaches through COVID. And, and football coaches and players all over the state battling and doing what they can to keep us playing. 
I couldn't be more proud. I mean, I'm always respectful of coaches, but this year coaches were doing so much stuff across the state behind the scenes that people don't know about. It was tough, but they did it because they love doing it. So I'm proud of them too. Absolutely. Coach, thank you so much. Enjoy it with your team. Really, really appreciate it. Guys, another year, another Pulaski Academy State Championship. And what you realize, too, is he's going to add another tattoo right there. I don't know if you've ever seen it. You see it online. He's got the PA tattoo on the yeah. bicep. So another addition to the Kevin Kelly tattoo in he's 2020. Gonna, he, he's going to have a whole arm sleeve here in a little while. But, uh, boy, I think he works out. Got those big arms. <laughs> Kevin Kelly's never, for, uh, for lack of words, because uh, I tell you what, he – Congratulations to him. He just uh, does a great job. Let's take a look at the final stats for this one. And Bobby, you know, when you look at this, just domination on offense. 579 yards compared to 305 uh, running. The Warriors did run the ball better than Pulaski Academy, but then in the passing game, it was all Bruins. Yeah, and 27 first downs speak for themselves, but 579 yards. I mean, that's a normal number for Pulaski Academy, and he mentioned the onside kicks. So when you're getting, you know, eight yards of play, and then all of a sudden you multiply your possessions by four because you're getting those onside kicks. doesn't matter about time of possession. It doesn't matter the total yards. It really doesn't matter. The only one that matters the top of that screen and the second most points ever scored in a high school football state championship game. Hats off to Pulaski Academy, who is again your 5A state champ. Yeah, no, and uh, did a great job with that. Uh, you know, before we uh, wrap things up today, uh, uh, for the last, what, three years, myself, you, uh, and a couple others here uh, with a, with uh, PBS Sports have, um, we, we, we've not had one, one member of our broadcast team, that's Scott Inman, and uh, we want to make sure that we say, uh, that we're thinking about you, Scott. We're thinking about uh, his wife and his entire family uh, as they go through some trying times right now. Yeah, it's uh, obviously a, a championship-winning coach. Nicole was got to coach her girls on the soccer field. Uh, just a tragic loss. Just 44 years old, but battled brain cancer as hard as anybody's ever going to do it. So obviously, we're keeping Scott and his family in our thoughts and prayers, and looking forward to to talking to Scott and also getting him back on the broadcast for basketball. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, well, that's going to do things for here at War Memorial Stadium as Pulaski Academy wins it by a final score of 64-27. to I want to give a special shout-out to McLean Leach, who uh, helped spot today for today. And I uh, want to thank everybody with uh, PBS Sports because they really are – uh, a great job. They, they, everybody from everybody down the truck and and up here in the in the booth, they do an outstanding job bringing you championship football action. So for Bobby Swafford, Hayden Balgavy, I'm R.J. Hawk. Your final in this one is Pulaski Academy winning a 5A state championship, 64-27 over Little Rock Christian. We'll be back at 6:30 for the 2A game right here on Arkansas PBS Sports.